I'm Perry, the Sid and Plain Sight, and to my right, sir of all things, Blaze TV, the one and only Mr. Brandon Steele. We have um, a mystery. We, we, we begin today with a mystery that wow. I think we're going to be able to solve pretty quick. Uh, and then, of course, we will go into David's last presentation, which he did go for four and a half hours again. Jesus Christ. So I think we're probably going to skip through, but it seems like, you know, this is the one he did uh, the day after the, the Trump attempt so right. i understand why he went long so i think uh i think we're gonna be we're gonna be in for quite the excursion this week that would have that would have been quite the you know real spoiler for his plans if the old donald got his head blown off that would have been well you know right after it happened one of the things i did see was uh in that portion of twitter is that was not the real donald trump oh it was a clone r r uh, or i think he was wearing a mask oh okay the real donald trump was for some reason in the cheyenne mountains oh where, that makes sense yeah instead of giving the speech he was giving he was in the mountains is so, that where the indians live well it's also that just sounds very cowardly <laughs> like yeah. that wouldn't that doesn't make sense that your your you know your divinely inspired leader would be in a different quite state. frankly i'm too scared to go outside <laughs> I think I'm gonna stay inside. What do you think, folks? But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know why they decided that was the case. But all right, David Wilcock, Lone Tracker. We've got we've got good news here, which is uh, now those those three loans didn't come in. But who cares? Because we now have about twenty options. Wow! All in or it's so cool that the number just keeps going just, up, just exponentially bigger every time. Well, because why? You know, it was one loan at first, and then those loans never paid out. But uh, who cares? Because then he had three options last week. This week. 20 options Hell yeah. all in orbit thanks to three impending purchase orders creating imminent cash flow oh wow a loan and an order three orders he's wow. gone up i think it was uh three loans and two orders the last japanese week. came back one of them is utterly huge so this is a very happy time the first of these is expected to hit very soon they want lots of due diligence in the final moment now this is intriguing for what I'm about to show you next. He tweeted this on the 18th of July. Right. Now, this is from several hours ago. Stavati had this to say. We are excited Look to announce it. that on Tuesday, July 16th, Stavati Aerospace received a loan commitment in excess of $20 million. Addressing round A of the SM-150 Sport Plane Development Program, the SM-150 prototype is planned to debut at EAA Oshkosh. Are they Oshkosh. really trying to make, like, the Corvette of planes? Like, well, hey, having a midlife, midlife crisis, here's a sports car in the sky. You're, you're actually pretty close. We'll go over the papers after this, but yes. But so, uh, as you'll all notice... The the loan apparently came in July 16th, but then on the 18th, David still seemed to think there was no loan. So, yeah, uh, is David just not being made aware of the fact they have a loan, or is Stavati lying? I also want to point out something else. This uh, Stavati loan announcement occurred at about uh, 3.30 in the morning. I wonder if they figured they had to tweet it so that when it you know doesn't come through because it's probably not real yeah of they course can go it's to not real. <laughs> they can go to dave and be like damn man we thought it was a sure thing too but uh, well, we're also shocked at this development but how would they not tell him the most public facing member of their company they had a loan three days ago why would they not inform him so he could inform everyone like us the critics who have been fucking pounding this drum for nine weeks yeah why not uh, inform it? But yes, I also find it very suspicious. Most big business announcements are not made at three thirty in the morning on, on, on Thursday nights. Yeah, that's uh, that's a weird move. But I mean, look at that stunning aircraft. Well, and then I went. And, uh, I wasn't familiar with this aircraft, so here's they they got the patent for this uh, this beautiful piece of machinery in 2016. Now they have not actually produced a single one of these, of course. No, but. Uh, Going back to what you said about the Japanese making orders, the original plan, all right, Stavati business plan here. The original plan, according to David, was free energy and hover cars. Right. That didn't pan out so great. So what they no. had pivoted to was creating military jets. Right, now, right. That's how we got the monster energy drink. As you can notice, 
that's not a military jet. That's just that's, that's a midlife crisis. Correct, as you pointed out, that is a civilian aircraft, and they yeah. kind of pitch it as being a replacement for a Cessna. I don't know if it's on this document, but the the plan is to charge about eighty grand for this thing. Want to look gay as hell in the sky? Yeah, you want to be a loser? <laughs> oh, did your wife leave you? Want to do a risky way to travel? But I, I nothing about this makes sense. Of course, it just I. No one's giving them money for this. I refuse to no. believe that. They don't have a car. They don't have anything. No, no. They've literally, they have never built one of these planes. And then somehow yeah. the idea is they're going to get this money and build it, even though they're severely in debt. They're going to lose their fucking location, probably. As an investor, I have <laughs> to see you at least have one of them. Maybe the plan here is they're just going to build this in, like, David's garage. I, I don't need you to have a lot of them, but can you at least make one? Or at least, uh, like, a piece of an airplane. If if not the full plane, how about the motor? How Anything. about a wing? How about, uh, I bet they probably have the seat. They're very proud of that seat. They went into great detail on yeah. it. The, the that paperwork. seat cost $20 million. Well, uh, I found it very interesting in the other paperwork, which I didn't bring up. They described the seat as crash-ready. Which that's bad. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's like an industry standard terminology. But I'd I found like that, crash resistant. Yeah, personally, I, I found that uh, a very weird way to to advertise it on your sales sheet. Because usually, when you're trying to sell someone something, you don't want to uh, pitch them on the worst possible thing that could happen. I'd want my seat to be able to eject. Now, with all that out of the way, uh, so technically, you know, Savati says they got this loan. I guess we will see. I very much doubt it. David doesn't seem to think they have it. Our global cord cutting. Hold on. I've, I've been sidetracked. Because this, this really sums up everything, doesn't it? This is a super chat to David. What you do is positive for people, no matter what if it turns out to be real or not. There you go. Isn't yeah. that the truth? Well, that's honest, at least. It is. Who cares if any of this is real? Which, um, I mean, that's kind of how I feel. I don't fucking care. What's it matter? No, it makes no difference to me. Yeah. It's just, you know... But David keep... cares so much that it's hilarious. Well, and especially because he keeps soliciting donations on the basis of these things yeah. being real. Yeah. Now, uh, I think we'll probably see it in this, unless it's in the section I, I think we're going to skip. David actually mentions how much money he makes a month uh, in this. Wow. And I'll say we were bang on the money. Um but I guess I'll, I'll hold off on that unless we uh, don't get to it. But yes, it's it's exactly what we expected, and his his commenters in chat did not <laughs> did not handle it terribly well. What the fuck? <sighs> yeah, are you? <laughs> hold on. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Okay, now that I'm done jerking <laughs> off, time to start the stream. Okay, everybody. Oh, what? The stream has started? <laughs> that was his global cord cutting. <laughs> it's your buddy. It's your pal, David Wilcock. And if you voted for the red shirt, then you are David, the winner. David, that's it clearly maroon. It, 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 he also called it maroon like two weeks ago. He's yes. running. Maybe he's had to sell his shirts to pay for things because he's, he's down to like three shirts. Here. And... Uh, <laughs> We've got actually warm temperatures here Did up he in the mountains. Did he just fucking uh, jog into the room? Thing. Why is he? Maybe. And I've got my proper internet connection back, so we're oh. back to... Thank God. Well, thank you only have three others, so... I'll be able to see what you guys are doing right as I'm talking. Yes, you got the maroon shirt. You're all... I can see... <laughs> Anybody who betted on maroon, well, you win. Dave, if you start letting us gamble on what shirts you wear, I'd absolutely do it. Something's weird about... He seems frantic in this. He's back on the weed. Which, uh, well, this, he, we will, of course, get into the assassination attempt, and he thinks he played a pretty big uh, role in that, so I, yeah. I think it's possible that he's very scared for his life at the moment. They're going to kill me. So today is a very, very exciting show. Uh, we got a lot to cover. Come. And um, it is about our global cord cutting ascension. Tarotin is already. I'm getting rid of cable, I guess folks. ARS is like We're all $1. getting rid of cable. Thank no you, more cords for us. <laughs> so you know, I, I do make about maybe ten grand a month on this, but nailed it. Okay, wow, we got right into it. I didn't think you'd get to that later. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think they. I think we said you made two to twenty five hundred a week based off just this. Yeah, he's making a few grand a show now. Uh, 
So that's 120 grand a year. That's a pretty good payday. It's uh, double the U.S. median salary. So I will say, look, I realize 100 grand is not what 100 grand used to be. 100 grand used to be like you are rich. Yeah, you used to be wealthy. Yes, it's no longer. You know, that is firmly middle class, if yeah. not upper middle class, though. So. His problem is exactly what we have uh, yeah. prognosticated it you to be. You should be comfortable. He needs to start downgrading because ten grand a month. Do you understand how poorly you have to be managing your finances to be making two thousand five hundred dollars a week and not have food money? Yeah, it really does beg the question as to just where his money goes. You can buy an entire month's worth of groceries for 500 bucks. Like, I, I feel like there has to be one thing he probably spends, like, $3,000 on a month. It's oh, it's, well, it's going to be retarded. His, his house, assuming he's paying for that, that'd be five or six grand a month something right Something stupider. Off top. There's going to be something. It's just too much money. It, 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 I also have a feeling that he buys very like expensive, food, like organic and you know grass fed well, type course, shit. He has so, to. yeah, but uh, he he could very easily downgrade and live a very comfortable life off of that kind of money. Spend two thousand dollars a month on organic <laughs> cheese. But that includes all the super chats and all the ads and everything. So it's yeah, it's not really enough, but it is sustained. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, what? Of, Your wife didn't take any money from you. First of all, just what an incredibly out of touch thing yeah. to say to it's someone. It's not enough. It's, I'm poor. It's just, I can't survive on this. God, my six figure life. Yeah, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, most people, it, it, the there's the median, but then there's like the average. Because I think, you know, the the average gets affected by people making like 10 grand a month or uh, a year and people making 8 million. Yeah. But I think that the median. In it's like the, 50 grand. Yeah, it's like 46, yeah, I think. Yeah. He's making triple the median, and he's complaining like he's making you 15 shouldn't, grand a unless year. Unless you're living in New York, you shouldn't be poor on that type of income. Correct. And I do thank you guys for participating in that. Uh, it's certainly not big Dude, money you as made far so as much I'm money. concerned. Why did you pay off your house? Just... Oh, his mortgage. Half that amount. Yeah, okay. His mortgage is half that amount. Well, I've got this crazy idea. <laughs> Damn, what kind of shit mortgage did he sign on to? Why not? Well, I'm, Five grand? Well, it's a you know it's a multi million dollar house. It's pretty expensive to live there. I guess, but he's been there for a while. You think he would have refinanced? Yeah, or fucking you know paid enough up front to kind of lower that payment. Oh, thirty two percent return <laughs> on interest. Okay. It's, it's uh you know, the, there's this novel concept where he could, he could rent out that house, he could sell that house, and then live in a place that's maybe two grand a month. David Wilcock having a roommate's a very funny idea for content. Him and Corey Good can team up again. Yeah, just like just some random dude who doesn't know who he is, just has to, he moves in with David because he needs a place. But just the idea of him having been claiming to be in desperate financial straits for the last two years. He has described himself as, like, viciously poor. Yeah, and it really, well, it just it begs the question as to, like, okay, then how and why? Correct. It is, uh, you know, in revealing this dollar amount. Like, I believe you're probably poor, but how? Well, I, this solves the equation. The answer is he's fucking terrible with money i mean like is he actively paying the salary of people at stavati he is i believe all his money goes because that's that basically. that's the only like unretarded way he could be bleeding so much money well actually hold on let me backtrack on that i believe stavati has said no one has actually received a salary but i do believe david is financing okay, okay everyone's working for free the sure. whole operation what that financing entails seeing as they've money laundering nothing is very interesting it, but it, it's embezzlement is what they do maybe <laughs> allegedly no, food and everything else it's just all getting turned so, into crypto well, thank you guys for being here today david we we've been hacked today because we have many many slides and of course, what we just went through is very intense. The attempted taking down of 45, 47. I can't believe you didn't come out in MAGA gear. It's quite a story, you guys. I'm sure I was he's very, got his, uh, his slippers on. Uh, I was in a lot of pain, actually. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show Did you. Did your this ear couple. hurt? Well, it's funny you say that, Brandon. It's funny <laughs> you say that. I didn't know. I thought he did not get to this until the back half of the uh the, the show so I guess I guess we're just getting straight into David far later but I've been Saving going the through world. massage and I had some very very intense work done on my neck 
My body work. Oh, told how me much he spent on the massage? Yeah, the only intense work on his neck should be done with a guillotine. I said no like happy before. ending for me. <laughs> I have two Unless huge there's black man marks here. Right here. I'll show you that a little later. <laughs> uh, but the point Bring is, out Julio. Yeah, <laughs> was I was in I'm bed, pounded so hard. I was trying to get some sleep. I didn't even feel like doing a show. I was depressed. Yesterday, There's a lot a of tension mood. in my asshole, Julio. Can you try and work <laughs> that out? Can you rub that out? There's a knot in there. Balloon knot in my ass. And then I wake up, and I, the first thing I saw was on TG, and it was from Ezra. Transgender. And said Trump is safe. And I'm like, well, safe from what? One day. And then I started to read other things on TG, and I realized, oh, my God, there's a video of this, and I start hearing what Hold sounds on. like. Hold on. How did you fall you know, asleep and wake up to this? It happened at 5. Well, here's the other funny thing about David. First, he's a man. He's uh, he's a delegate boy because 10 grand a month is not enough. And despite the fact that he works no job, he regularly takes naps in the middle of the day. Yeah, what is go what's going on here? Now he could just be severely depressed and doing the thing where you just lay in bed all day, which I mean, would make that, sense. That but, is it. I he's he strikes me as a man who would troll Twitter more. But he, he frequently it's funny too, because he always likes to brag about the fact that he wakes up early at like five AM to work on his books. Yeah. But if you if you go to go, sleep at 5 p.m. Correct. It's not It's not that impressive, especially if you're catching another nap yeah, around 3 p.m. You're basically just nocturnal. Crack, 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 crack. It's like, oh, my gosh. Obviously, this I is something scared, we talked about. I got scared and started crying. This is very real that this threat exists. Somebody like me, I'm on the front lines. I'm I just unbelievable. A real motherfucker like me, a real <laughs> motherfucker like me. I'm out on the front lines, play a real <laughs> motherfucker like me. I take care of business. The the front lines to him is a uh, hidden away in the mountain in I'm fucking out here. Colorado. I'm out here getting shot at, player. I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this for myself. I already know these things. Well, but you just said you make ten grand a month doing yeah, it. So that's not for there's, me. There's some incentive to keep doing yeah, it. I don't get that money. But what good is the knowledge if I don't share it with anybody? So, amen, brother. The stakes are very high. The stakes are very real. And I had already been talking about the global cord cutting that was going on with the DS. Uh -huh. This is something that's been a factor. This is not new. Uh, and it's really accelerated after the debate in which, as I said, it was like he was debating the Crypt Keeper. Very and clever, Dave. Yeah. These I've faces never heard that. He that. Held for long periods of time and <sighs> he could barely string a sentence together. He was trying to talk too fast. It clearly wasn't working out for him very well. Come on. I see man. a lot of donations coming in. Tarotina did it again. I can send you more in USD, but only by by Western Union's tricky dangers here in Argentina. No, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just yes, got to have are. some fun somewhere. Uh, Tina Marie said, hi, David. Thoughts on Trump? And then we had Tony Dip also donated $50. Love your work. Could you maybe mention any influence Jordan Peterson may have had on you? Name. He seems pretty interesting as well. Well, uh, there are some Jordan Peterson slides Jordan coming Peterson's up. I don't know if that's the same person or not. I, don't really, <laughs> I haven't studied this particular guy. Shelby72. Hi, David. Love and light. Michelle from Scotland. Anyway, we got, I, I, I love you guys very much, and we also have so many okay. slides to get We should today, book really a booth at the next UFO conference and just have it be a whole booth dedicated to why David Wilcox is a homosexual. And that, uh, like the conspiracy. You know what we should do? Remember that fucking book about Jared Leto? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to write and print an entire book on the, the uh, conspiracy of David Wilcox being a homosexual. Being gay. Who's laundering his gayness through a, a aerospace company. I'm sure we could rent a booth for a few hundred bucks. Uh, yes, we might have to do it under a, a presumed identity, but... We'll have one of our Patreons be the front yes. man. <laughs> uh, so we're going to keep going on slides, because it's Just very 400 important. 400 PowerPoints. So this slides. was a global cord cutting, <laughs> and what we saw was that they cut off the money, and that's really the all-important thing. When the money is gone, it's time for them to... Take your house. ...go for <laughs> the wounded lion approach. They have nothing left to do. And again, you know, most of the people in my family, in fact, basically everybody else in my birth family... Does not like 45 at all. Oh, no. Here comes they angry daddy. are very <laughs> resistant to this type of information because if you only look at this from the framework of what would appear to be a normal election, what would appear to be a normal political battle between two rivals, and if you're willing to believe what you're being told, then 45 is presented as this very arch nemesis of humanity, the next Hitler. And there are yes, people who yes. really have bought into this, and we have to have compassion for them because... It turns out that it really is a battle of good versus evil, in my opinion. And the evil side makes itself pretty I clear. Can't, and I can't place it, but something's off with him. I, I don't know if it's... Well, he almost just got killed. I guess that probably... You know what? 
Yes, that actually probably yeah, is he legitimately died. the thing. He just, he just... He's a new man. Yeah, he's, he's humbled by If his... David can dream himself into PTSD, he can delude <laughs> himself in that near-death experience. That's an excellent point. All his psychiatric trauma yeah. is the result of the dream realm. Yeah, so that... David's one of the few people able to influence his own mind that way. But he just... It, it... I'm noticing it over the weeks is he is losing his ability to tell a story in like a, a linear well, fashion. Well, his, his mind no, no longer operates linearly. It's all circles and loops. Because for the most part, when you're listening to this, if you didn't have all the back details already, like I wouldn't know what the fuck the point you of need this to, is. You need to know the lore. You, you really do. You have to be deep into David to understand this cycle nonsense. If you get into a codependent relationship with somebody who is a oh, psychopath. for fuck's sake. <laughs> You end up having to give up more and more of your freedom, right on more cue. and more yep. of your sanity, and it takes an ever-increasing um, um, amount of denial to be able to go along with what they want God to do. God does they it. They end up really, dragging you into their battles. She broke his heart. They end up wanting you to fight their enemies uh, for them. They end up Marty morning creating evil. all these conflicts that you have to clean up <laughs> and mess from. I can never from. get up. Oh, give, and get it over. is very, very difficult his to break up with the psychopath. Because first of all, they don't let you know that's what they are. They become the embodiment of whatever you love the most. And this is done in politics. I remember with George W., I was seeing that happen with right-wingers. You know, he's very anti-abortion. He's got a few small talking points, uh, pro-military, anti-abortion, et cetera, et cetera, on the surface. And these gifts are given to your political constituency so that they bond with you because they feel that you represent the embodiment of their family. It you are is David just figuring out politicians lie to the constituents in order to, like, gain the vote? Kind of, yeah. Is he just discovering they will say things on the campaign trail that they never actually intend to follow through on? A little bit. Little essentially, bit. their mother and father. You are essentially a God figure for them. They want you to think that there is no God except for them. And then in that process, what ends up happening is that you are bonded. You feel very emotionally James attached. bonded. <laughs> and again, they, in this current cycle, what we see with the left is that they have given many great gifts to the people who are on the far side of that spectrum. It would appear to be on the surface some type of global revolution in which they want certain talking points, like LGBT, to be very highly stressed. Yeah, and kids are gay. it would appear that if you are in that constituency that you've never been respected before and these people are finally standing up for you and you're willing to go down with the ship. Now, is that really what it is? No. It turns out that the inoculations are very bad for you and we have okay. what, Hold on. what the fuck's the point here i, I know, don't know i again i know the point he's making because of the backstory which is he uh he says democrats want to kill gay people right which is why they so heavily pushed the vaccine towards gay people that's he's, very anti-lgbt of them correct he says they're they're only uh, sort of appealing to them in an attempt to murder them all yeah of course what that has to do with what occurred on July 13th? Well, a bullet's whatever. an inoculation in a sense. He did use that metaphor repeatedly in the book. Any yeah. food, bullet, needle, everything is the Anything vaccine. that penetrates is a needle. Well over 90% uptake in that population. So do they really love you if they got you to take this and now you find out that it's actually <laughs> got these horrible side effects? But it's a very, very difficult thing. It's, it's extremely perspective shifting for people to imagine that there is a global nemesis and that what they will do is tell you exactly what you want to hear. They'll they'll hit off all your talking points. They'll make you feel amazing. They'll they will they'll suck shamelessly you off. dump on what they call oh, your dump enemy. on your chest. And they will... can, can I just point out this is exactly what Stavati's board is doing to him? Is they are telling him everything he wants to hear? Ironically, and he might be able to at some point make money by suing them for fraud. That uh, that's probably his best hope is <laughs> some sort of hail mary Cause, legal suit because he's being defrauded. Allegedly. Stroke your ego day after day if you watch their stuff or read their stuff. Make you think that you're the cool ones and, every, and, the, and the opponent is the loser. There's a whole secret thing going on that most people are not aware of, which is that the presidency that we had before this one was actually part of the biggest covert operation ever seen in the world, run by actually a majority of the U.S. military and intelligence community and those communities around the world. Now, the problem with that is, of course, that means that they failed. 
right? It does, yeah. So, uh, again, backstory for those unfamiliar. What he is referring to is, of course, uh, QAnon and Donald Trump and uh, Q were in charge of rescuing all the the children who were being sex trafficked by pedophiles. And they were putting people to death in Guantanamo. Yeah, we're executing them. Yeah, pretty much every politician in the mainstream is dead. They have been executed by... uh, uh, firing line at uh, Gitmo. The QAnon seemed to have decided the shooting was fake. Yes, and yes, they did almost yeah, immediately. Immediately. That fellow's not dead. <laughs> now, this is where it starts to get really yeah, strange. Well, his You're not brain be told this splattered on the in the bleachers Closest beg to differ. Got the 17th letter, and then the mainstream is saying, oh, no, no, this is all conspiracy theory. We had the emails come out from WikiLeaks. Now Julian has been I'm pretty freed. sure Mike Cernovich did, spoken yet, just did an interview with Tucker, where they talk about how QAnon was a government psyop, so I'm sure that's not going to go over well with this crowd. <laughs> I'm sure David will will feel heartbroken that one of his heroes is telling him he's dumb. Well, one of the cool moves they do now, nine <gasps> eleven. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it was an inside pause. Uh, one of the cool moves they do now is when someone they previously liked says something they disagree with, they just say. He has to say that. Yeah. No, Tucker <laughs> needs to say he that. He had to say that. Yeah. For what reason? They never really go that deep, but he had to do it. There was some very compelling stuff he that's been happening the last few weeks. Where now, me. if that information comes out, he's safe. He's not um, in prison anymore. And if it was on somebody else's server backed up, even though he had to delete it, it's not his fault. But when those emails first came out in 2017, when I believe it was, it created a massive awakening mean, for those who were ready to see the ugly truth. And it's not just one side of the political aisle. It was basically both sides of the political aisle. So even though the second to last presidency came out of the right wing, Um, there are still many elements of that political spectrum that are very negative. And what we had actually was a fractional group, a different group that was run by what I call the Alliance. And uh I was briefed on the Alliance back in 2009. that They want to do a full-blown global exposure of the real problem on Earth. And the real problem on Earth, as it actually (laughs) turns out, is Luciferian. Oh. And it goes back for <laughs> centuries. It goes back to Carthaginian magic, where they're summoning Moloch and Baal, these probably what would amount to reptilian Draco alien gods. And they will show up if you offer them Do you think a lizard shot a, Trump? As, such, as example is the burnt Maybe. Offering. This is not fiction. We know that extraterrestrials exist. It's been disclosed now by Congress. There's been multiple UFO crashes. I, I like this move, too, where you just say something fucking ridiculous and be like, this is true. Yeah, no, it's proven. <laughs> no, I won't provide any evidence, yeah. but if I say it's true, it is true. It's How like, is it proven? Unimportant. Yeah, it's like that rule in Islam where you can get a divorce if you just say, I'm getting a divorce three times out yeah. loud. This is not even a matter of speculation anymore. It's a matter of provable fact. And then after 1947, the Roswell crash... Facts. All of that secret technology went underground and became a part of what was called Majestic. Even when and something so insane effort, like a presidential assassination occurs, he still is going to rehash the same fucking material to begin his show. He's trapped. To defeat the, expose and defeat this global cabal came from Majestic. Um, they have very advanced technology that we don't get to know about. There's a lot of stuff that's classified. So I built, I co-founded... I didn't really co-found, but I joined in with Stavati Aerospace oh, okay. <laughs> in 2018. Well, that's interesting. And this is a company that's bringing out that technology from the Area 51 Black Ops world into the public world. So we're beginning with conventional, well, more conventional aircraft like this. This, of course, as I've said before, is our SM-39 Razor. It's a next-generation air defense. It's going to so, be the fastest plane ever built. David, in that's 4. a toy. <laughs> No, it's real. It's real. He flies it all around. <laughs> uh, again, this occurred when he did this. This would have been on the 14th. And then two days later, they got that giant contract for a completely different plane. So somehow, David is just entirely unaware of what the company he is entirely financing is doing. It doesn't make yep. any fucking sense. Now, if I had to throw out my prediction, it would be that perhaps the guy running the Twitter was a bit drunk at 3.30 in the morning and yeah. maybe posted some things that aren't true. It's got these huge jet engines that go all the way down here from the from the front of the bulkheads to the back. But, but that's, that's part of how it's able to accelerate this fast. printed. And... Basically, everybody except for one person who watches my show Holy understands shit. that this is true. That one person is <laughs> extremely about the active, assassination. And we'll talk more about that later. But I really get hardly any hate at all, which is nice. Mm, sure. So you guys understand <laughs> that what we're trying to do here is create disruptive change uh-huh. in the industry. And we're going to do that by selling more conventional aircraft like the one that you just saw. But then the proceeds of that money that we're going to earn are going to be rolled over into... Advanced technology, and that includes hover cars, which use actual anti-gravity. We have another plane called the SM-36, 
We have some countries that are very interested in that. It's a vertical takeoff and landing without so jet he's not even going to mention waves. the fucking plane. It actually uses an electrogravitic system. Probably doesn't even know it exists. And the jet engines kick in. This is absolutely true. I did a whole movie about it called Spaceship, which is it's, on Oh, it's absolutely it's true. It's the first one they <laughs> blocked, so you have to use the direct link or you can't find it. But part two is still up on Vimeo. And I may put it up on Twitter pretty soon as well. How brave of you. So this is about as dangerous as anything can get. They don't want you to know that you don't have to pay for your energy. They don't want you to know that we already could build spaceships. They don't want you to know that there are covert elements that already have a massive amount of these different types of spaceships. Some of them are cylindrical. There's different types that already exist out there. But and it's but been they a don't, secret that's been kept secret by them. this global criminal element. Because once the technology comes out, you've got anti-gravity, you've got free energy. People don't need to pay money for their energy. And about 80% of all the bills that you have have but, to do with energy. But, but, they, on, they do have to pay money because someone has to fund the technology. The yeah, technology, you do still have to build it. It's not going to create itself from nothing. You still have to pay for all the, the raw materials. Yeah. The Also, the you know, the much bigger problem is that the technology does not exist, which is a pretty big obstacle to overcome it's when it comes to... It's a bit of a stumbling block. Yes, the fact that it violates the, the fundamental laws of physics is a bit of a bigger issue, but... He says it's true, so who am I to doubt him? For your car, heating and cooling your home, and these kinds of things are actually what are called capital in oh, basic Keynesian economics. I love financial But when I you get beyond the need for capital David. to be something yeah. you pay for, I can't you end live up in a situation where people can now go off so and you have goods and services. You have a hover car with the gravity that powers you to be able to go into a remote area that nobody's ever lived in before, set up your own cabin out there, you have all the energy you need, you can start growing your own food, gardening, hunting, whatever you want to do. Well, live yeah, by just go stream, live in the middle of water. nowhere. Yeah, and you you're can't, free. You don't have uh, to pay anybody. You don't have to make people money to be alive. You can't. And do that terrifies that. them because they really want your money. And so what's happened is that the faction that was part of the alliance has now been able to get into office as of 2016. Yeah. And they passed a whole bunch of executive orders that are real military laws that are bringing down this cabal. And so what's interesting is that the whole entire last four years have played out without us knowing what's going on. The only way that this alliance communicates is through covert methods. Through <laughs> yeah, like fucking Twitter. Yeah. Uh, again, to, to point this out, David has said he has read in on what the alliance is doing, and they're you know monitoring his phone calls and his therapy sessions, as we learned right. last week. Uh, he was, of course, completely wrong about the last four years. He said, going back to 2020, uh, Joe Biden would never take office. Now, that is, uh, yeah. that's not quite how that worked out. And then he kept the faith basically until a few weeks ago that Donald Trump would eventually be replacing Joe Biden in office. And yeah. when he gets something wrong, he just kind of conveniently moves on from that without ever addressing the fact that he was really fucking wrong. Yeah, no, 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 that's unimportant. So this, uh, this creates the issue where either the alliance is completely wrong or he just does not know what the alliance is doing and you have to be able to decipher how they communicate now i was first briefed on the alliance in 2009 you've already said and this. at that time i was told that they were going to be arresting the top people in this cult and it actually is satanic that's one of the most upsetting things we're going to have to Damn, learn that'd about be so sick. nefarious activities <laughs> it sounds pretty cool it's pretty there's metal. no reason why anybody in their public constituency should want to support them when they learn the truth and the reason is that the darkness is so vast they don't care if you love them, they don't care if you voted for them. They don't care if you sent them money. They just want everybody gone. And it doesn't matter who you are. And it doesn't matter if you're a rainbow colored person. It doesn't matter what, no, what your itinerary is. Gay. It doesn't matter how much you've been supporting them. This is what betrayal really looks like. They don't even like. care if you suck dick as a man. Psychopaths love you and destroy you at the same time. They are simultaneously you obsessed that, with you. Folks? And therefore they will glorify you and those you for you no at the same time. The cycle inevitably involves You have fucked in the ass and they don't and if even you don't care. understand that, then you think that you're going to win if they continue to stay in I power, it's David exactly the opposite. They want moment. this earth burnt to win. <laughs> they want to retreat underground in the underground cities. A few cities years ago, I did some stuff. Maybe you saw some stuff. Uh, Greenbrier Hotel. The weed made me do like it. That. But for the most part, <laughs> we don't know about these deep underground military bases. Selling your ass for an eighth of weed. I'll suck your dick for a gummy. I was going to withdraw. There are so many people who don't understand what's going on because the media has been compromised so greatly that if anybody were to try to tell you the truth openly, they would be attacked and destroyed immediately. Okay, we're 17 minutes in, and he is just completely... This started 17 minutes ago with Trump has been executed, and then we just went into Stavati and yeah. the alliance. It and, seemed like he was really just going to get into it, and then nope. I know, I was so pleased. I thought just, we were going to avoid the, the fucking hour of fluff. But, I mean, uh, I guess this is how he goes so four and a half hours. Like and other truth-tellers to connect the dots for you and bring out information that you've not heard before.
So if you're new to this, I want you to know this is a very exciting thing. We're already now at 4,300 people, which is great. Hell yeah. Uh, so Good we've got a great Dave. crowd today. Nice. And the point is... Well, you know, when the you president nearly gets assassinated, my first thought is, what does David Wilcock have to say? Yeah. Now, mine, ironically enough, kind of was, because I just <laughs> knew I knew what would, uh, whatever was coming was going to be real <laughs> fucking nuts. Yeah. So. For your benefit. They're really not. And I think a lot of people have suddenly woken up to this. But yes, others because, turned minute, to him for string a sentence together. legitimate news. He can't even walk <laughs> off the stage properly. He's terrifying. got all these cognitive problems. It definitely looks like Alzheimer's. And that means that he's not really running the show, Dr. which violates David. the whole concept of what an elected official is supposed to be in that position. So if he's not running the show, then who is? And is there a greater agenda going on? Well, now what's happened is that as a result of this horrible debate performance, that certain factions within this political party are trying to say, no, 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 it's okay. We're still going to run him. He's not stepping down. It's all fine. Hell yeah. <laughs> and the whole entire public has had a massive rebellion. That's why, as I say, it's a global cord cutting. And they cut off the money. They're not supporting him with money. There's lots of even celebrities now coming forward, like George Clooney, saying this. Don't they have like two hundred million Times, dollars in many governors? And so they've got plenty. They're of trying money. to act yeah. like everything's okay, but the point is the but money got cut off. But outside those two hundred million so dollars, this leads to desperation. that's basically nothing to David. Now we have a whole group of people <laughs> who are completely <laughs> dissatisfied, and they're saying, "I want you to fix it. It has to be somebody else. Can't be this guy." <laughs> and then with their polling results, uh, it's like, "Well, you know, dummy. Newsom doesn't work out. Whitmer doesn't work out. Michelle doesn't work out. I guess it's got to be Kamala." You know, and so once again, she seems to be very compromised in a lot of ways, there, not really up for the level. No one whose political commentary I value less than David. Yeah, it's because really nothing. He just he never cared about politics until it became financially yeah. prudent to do so. You're the alien guy. I yes. don't care about economic theory so, from you. So all these grand political schemes David is commenting on, he didn't start reading about politics until 2016. No. And realistically, it was more so Q, so like 2017. And that's after he stopped reading new books <laughs> responsibility and that's why they've been keeping her in the spotlight for so long so the whole thing has really become an epic dumpster fire um. in biblical proportions and we have to ask ourselves where is this all going if, if you're on the left it's like well they're all spinning their wheels right now but what they know for a fact is that they're angry they're pissed off and so they've cut off the money and there doesn't appear to be any chance the money to that, who? that that side could win because even if there's underhanded techniques involved it has to be a fairly close race there have to be a lot of people who are hoodwinked by this and and those people have left <laughs> So now what we have is the cornered lion, and lo and behold, just days after this global cord cutting has taken place, we have an assassination attempt. This is not at all surprising. It's exactly what we were expecting to happen. I've briefed you on this before. We'll go through this again. Did it he? It was when we expected it to happen. I guess. We knew there's a high threat profile. We've been talking about the fact you're not going to be waiting until November. This is, this is another one of those things uh, psychics always do after the fact. He didn't say, fuck it, we have watched every single video this man has put out. Yeah. I feel like I would recall if he specifically said Trump was going to be assassinated on a specific date. Now, certainly he's talked about the president being killed before, but... What what these guys then do is after an event like that happens, they then go back through their own catalog and yeah. sort of bend and twist everything to them having uh, been predicting this the whole time. Anybody who tells you that you are, I, I can't even listen to it. I'm not going to listen to it. There's so many communications I've been giving you week after week from the Alliance through Shadow Vezra, which is where it appears on X, that we now know for a fact I like that, that there's been X. just this absolute know. total redundancy on warnings. That something is going to happen, something very big that will lead to arrests, that will lead to an unprecedented event, probably bigger than 9-11 in terms of its magnitude, but actually much more positive. This event includes the uh, use of the emergency messaging system, <laughs> where you might not have internet, you might not have power, but your phone... Now, I will say, there was a crowd strike uh, thing that went down today, and everyone's yeah. fucking computers didn't work. Yeah. It has uh, since been fixed, oh. so I guess oh. that was not quite on the same level as 9-11. We'll start broadcasting apparently seven different movies that Everything the alliance has seven. created that will explain seven you what's cameras, going on. Seven movies. He loves you're hear the number people seven. are being arrested. You're going to hear about what they were really up to. Some of these movies are going to be extremely upsetting. And there's no turning back. At that point, I will I never be called conspiracy theorist movies. again. There's still going to be people who don't like it. They're going to really freak out. They don't want the truth. But what we just saw was the fulfillment of prophecy. We, we knew there was going to be this type of an attempt made. And we were warned about it extensively. And then lo and behold, it happened. Now, here's the next interesting thing. Within days of this global cord cutting, the money got cut off. You know, he's done as a candidate. Nobody wants him at all. And they're not putting their money in. In fact, $90 million got pulled out. Then there was this attempt made, and people are seeing it as a divine intervention. There is no way that this was staged. I believe that this was real. This was a real attempt. Hell and yeah. 
it only the, the projectile that, only it, missed. It is very crazy that this is the one thing he has decided really happened. Yeah, no, this one was the one. Yes, for for I guess just because you know it's it's the side he supports, so yeah. of course it really happened. But if this had happened to any other political candidate, fake as hell, he would have been saying you know it was AI by literally one inch. I mean, if it had been just the slightest bit closer, it could have torn off his cheek. I mean, it's just it's incredible that, is how that he only got an ear piercing out of it. works. And it was just enough blood to be very dramatic, but, you know, th th there are good surgical interventions you can do for this. Cartilage can heal, or they can graft cartilage from another part of your body, put it up there. They can take skin from your waist and, and graft it in. I actually had exactly the same type of injury. This is oh. another really strange oh. thing, folks. So check this out. Oh, this so he had the exact same type of injury. I can't wait to hear the story of when David was shot in the yeah, ear. Yeah, I too was <laughs> ear, taken right out by an assassin. In fact, I'll even go to the camera three. Uh, I got, I had a. T yeah, look at it. Do you, uh, do you see anything that resembles the the ear being ripped in half by a bullet? Not particularly, because it looks pretty normal to me. Tent pole go through my ear. Oh, that's and the if same you look as closely, an assassin. You can see oh, it's ring, yeah, right? there's a ring. <laughs> In my you year. know, I was in eighth yeah. grade. Remember when Lee I was Harvey Oswald threw a with tent my pole at JFK? Devin. Devin blew his head off. <laughs> he went out into his backyard and he ended up throwing a tent pole, a pole to set up that a tent, aluminum so pole with a hollow end, and like it poured a... out this little <laughs> round spot in my ear. I, I don't know like how well it's the Trojan it War. Yeah, yeah so that that area has always been this way. And, and uh, Trump now, was shot in the uh, the right ear, right? I think so, yeah. So that is actually that is the, the other ear, the left ear. That's okay. the gay Trump one. Trump has David. the same thing on the opposite ear, which is the right ear. So oh, it's like yeah. wow. It was a tent pole. I didn't get yeah. an earring yeah. to tell people I'm gay. <laughs> um, I I kind of grew up like I had long hair after I did this because I didn't want people to look at it. At first, it was really red and swollen. Nice. No, so it's a major vain. formative part of my life in junior high. People called me Vinny or Vincent Van Gogh for like a year. And so I, it's very trippy Did to they? me that this injury of I've carried not. my whole life that I ended up getting a $4,000 insurance settlement for from my former friend's insurance. What? what? You got a life insurance settlement because your ear got hit? This fucking piece of shit sued his friend? This company is now so symbolic of what's happened here. I mean, literally, there was only one little piece of cartilage that kept this alive. And so that was a very, very fascinating thing to go through when I woke up yesterday and I realized I he got hit in the ear. Not exactly in the same place, a little bit higher, but... Very, very close, within like one centimeter, and it's the same size, and it's round. Because, again, mine was the end of a tent pole. Like if I use one of my prop cigarettes here, it just kind of popped right in like that. Uh -huh. And I had this perfect ring. When I first looked at it in the mirror, there was a perfect round ring there. And I was just, my mother was all freaked out, you know. So it's like, wow, there's scientific uh -huh. evidence in my sue. face now of a connection to this incident. And we'll get more into that later, but Wait. it's incredibly fascinating. But, but it, those two are very different things. One, one person was shot at by a guy who fucking hated his guts. And then David had an accident with his friend, which is not the same thing like an assassin. Fascinating element of the story. It's as if my whole life built up to this moment. <laughs> so people are saying, you know, this really looks like divine intervention. Uh -huh. And then we have this kind of stuff going on. George News says X is full of these types of messages, thousands of them. I woke up thinking about this. I'm still stunned. I've been as big of a critic of him as anyone else on the right over the past couple of years. But after what happened last night, with his brave, defiant reaction, especially the stunning photos that captured it, it stirred something in me I never knew was there. Somehow, now I want to run through a wall for someone I worked against the entire primary cycle. If this didn't change the world, it certainly changed me. And this is just one of many, many examples. This is something weird and cosmic. Well, one they guy tried on to do Twitter JFK. says it. They tried to do that an open-air Dealey Plaza type of assassination. Boy, the guy did who did they. it was within a nice, <laughs> easy range for that type of a rifle. So the fact that he didn't make the target and that it got the ear... It was just enough to cause blood and be very theatrical and be real. So this was not staged. This was not fake. This was something where they actually tried to do this. And it appears to be really some type of divine intercession, which is where my bailiwick is, right? I've been trying to tell you all along, we're living in a holographic illusion. So this is very <laughs> <What>? fascinating. <laughs> it was real. <laughs> well, now we we're living in a holographic <laughs> illusion. <laughs> yeah, it was very real. Nothing is real. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually in an ad from 2023 for BlackRock. Uh, and there, there's a close-up of it. So isn't that interesting? We'll talk likes. more about yeah, that Yeah, my, uh, my computer <laughs> auto-corrects to black cock. <laughs> it was Nancy a couple of days ago saying he must be stopped, he cannot be president. We should shoot so him this, in the head. These kind of sentiments were being given because a global core cutting is happening now. <laughs> my <laughs> God, it's like uh, she was telling us what was going <laughs> to happen. My right ear three we days should ago, send an autistic kid with a rifle up to a building. That's not surprising because, again, I went through very intense bodily pain. Wait, hold on. What do you say about exact upper lobe of my ear. I smashed my right ear three days ago and it's been causing me pain in the exact upper lobe of my ear. Well, yeah. 
That's that's not surprising. Not as much as me, <laughs> but everyone's got everyone's got ears. And if uh, if we were to survey the entire population of the earth, you'd actually find a very large amount of people who had pain in their ears on that day. Just I mean, just on the basis of people who get their ears pierced every day, there has to be tens of thousands of that uh, people getting their ears pierced every day. I would suspect so. Hurt. So this is it's just such a non-valid way to assess these situations. Pause again. Uh, it's real. <laughs> I went through very intense bodily pain in the same region here. In fact, let me show you. I've got this bruise on my shoulder. You see that? <laughs> see how nasty that is? Oh. And there's another one over here, folks. You got That's because I just dead. had body work done. Yeah. And the body work was intended to eliminate pain in my neck. So you get cupping, which is where they put a suction cup. It's like a plastic suction cup on your put body. Put it on and my and balls. You create a bruise over a period of time, which is supposedly caused Someone's by just using a breaking down of the <laughs> scar tissue in your fascia. It holds the muscles in the wrong position. So when the blood comes up, it's not really a bad thing. You know, you could also just... It actually just means that you're getting through this. So I broke through incredible stuff in my neck. No. It'll probably heal me forever. But I was in terrible pain the day after, which was Saturday. So, yeah, this has been a very, very interesting journey to wake up from that nap. And and I knew that the global cord cutting was going wow, on. what a journey. And I woke up from a nap. When you... Cutting the cords I is a critical, Twitter. important <laughs> thing in defeating psychopaths in your life. And this is where I wanted to get into originally in the show, because your energy can be remotely drained with these cords. Now, what do I mean by cords? What I mean is that we are energy beings as well as physical beings. Uh -huh. When you get into the highest level teachings like Tibetan Buddhism, the Ascension teachings, as well as it correlates with Kabbalistic magic. Mm -hmm. It turns mm -hmm. out that when people send anger and hatred to you, when they're lying to you and they're deceiving you, basically most of the time these are going to be psychopaths or people on that spectrum. They are not wired like everybody else. They actually enjoy creating as much emotional distress as possible. The intentional infliction of emotional distress is their main avocation in life. They want you sad. They want you depressed. They want they I want think to betray David you is and they're vastly jealous. overestimating now, people the amount with this of disorder, true psychopaths. Uh, they the have world. a whole set of yeah. characteristics that are it's recognized very, by psychologists. He sees them everywhere. What yeah. isn't commonly known is that they have 17 different abnormal regions it's, of their brain, most of which, all except for three, uncommon. have significantly less gray matter. There's actually rotting dead tissue in there, 20% reduction of brain oh, mass. Oh, right. They have, they have dead and no brains. electrical activity. And this includes the frontal lobes. So, this biblical concept of the mark of the beast appears to be a representation of psychopaths. Now, what's strange about them is that they talk very well. They're at, the first characteristic on the PCLR checklist, which is psychology's assessment of psychopathy, the very first one that they talk about is glib, which means they talk fast and they talk extensively and you can't get a word in edgewise. So they can appear... Does he not realize that describes him to a fucking T? No, he, he never realizes that. The guy who goes four and a half hours every week saying the exact same shit over and over yeah. again? No, he's incapable of noticing that. They will lie to you, they will deceive you, they have sexual promiscuity... Oh, no. Mm -hmm. not, you really can't believe anything that they say. They're chameleonic. They Like like a guy who says he's going to get a loan every single week and then it never comes through. Yeah. Modify their behavior to try to adapt to what you want the most. Which is like you picking up all the political shit. That's... But then you'll notice if you get to live with them and you know them, that you're always working against severe disabilities. They have severe problems with reading and writing. They don't write. They're not as literate as most people. They can't remember how to spell words. They don't have good grammar. They have a really hard time learning how to use electronic equipment. They can't remember things. They can't go through complex learning curves very well. Right. So they if they murder. learn something, it takes them a lot longer. So there are significant cognitive difficulties. And what they end up wanting to do is to manipulate other people t through lying. They just see lying as an expediency. It's no big deal to them. Uh -huh. And without the frontal lobes, they don't feel happiness from being loved, giving and receiving love. That doesn't do anything for them. Oh. The striatum is what fires up. That's the part of the brain that has pleasure. When they see people suffering, like images of people with their hand in a car door getting smashed, I fucking that's why they like David. horror movies, violence. <laughs> <It's, laughs> this, this is what they get off on. Every We've single proven week, it with brainwave activity, the where the striatum, the striatum which is related yeah. sexual pleasure, will actually fire up when they see violence. So you have to realize that one trauma, such as an intimate trauma in childhood, for example, if you get violated that way, right. that's oh, no. enough to, to make your brain shut down in these Seriously, 17 regions. I have a Wrong great button. life. But uh, I was going to say, hasn't David, like, again, you know, saying this, uh, deserve to be raped. This, he's, he's describing himself. Yeah. Like, he, he's checked every single one of these boxes so far, with the exception of sexual promiscuity, but that actually goes the other way, because a lot of people who are sexually abused have issues later in life with mm -hmm. it. So, I... Uh, he really could just be saying this to a mirror. Yeah. And maybe he should. And now, the, the shutdown is because you can't feel the emotions anymore. It's it's too painful. Something happens to you that actually causes a snap, and in one moment, your brain has an entirely new fingerprint. And these areas shut down, and usually they never come back. 
So these people are essentially angry all the time, they're sad mm -hmm. all the time, they're frustrated, and they end up hating and wanting to punish biological life. Oh, no. They are not happy with themselves, and they are jealous of people who are not disabled. They will cover up their disabilities <laughs> very well, and they typically like to be in, a, in an authority capacity. They want to be uh, dominant like over other people, they want to be the boss, they want to <laughs> anger, take control, get other people to do the hard work that they themselves are too disabled to actually produce. Another problem they have is dissociation. They typically have at least two personalities. There's the waking surface personality, which thinks that they're a good person and is pretty nice, but as soon as things start going a little sideways for them, as soon as things start, start to be a problem, they shift into another personality Get ready that for is hell. mostly run out of the reptilian <laughs> core it's, of the brain, and I call that really rage child. uncanny. <laughs> this is the part of them that may be willing to commit murder or acts of violence. This is the part of them Rape that they shift me. into when they go arguing and they become very combative. This is the part of them that has a hatred of life, a hatred of other people. I wonder how long before he actually gets to uh, the point seems about to be getting life to work out for Probably a minute. You. If you're a happy person, if you live a pretty happy life, you're trying to do the best that you can, you're trying to be a good person, uh -huh. you smile, you, you, you like to meet other people, you like to talk to them, they hate that. <laughs> Most of them oh, do they? don't really yeah. want to interact yeah, with other people unless it. they can control them. And on the farther ends of the spectrum, they can become very isolated. And everything to them is a game. Everything is a manipulation, a lie, a setup. They don't want the truth. They want to cohere everything to their own vision. And again, the personality characteristics are incredibly consistent, so much so that there's only 20 questions that psychologists use to assess whether you have this Look problem. Look at his titties. And if you have, <laughs> He's there, getting they, fat, I'm telling they're you. They're getting uh, lower and lower on the body here. You can see a nice little outline there. have this problem then they say in psychology that it's, it's treatment resistant. There's really nothing you can do to stop this from happening. So these people, again, will not enjoy being loved. They will enjoy sexual gratification, but for them, a sexual experience has to involve dominance and power, the conquering of another person. Uh, like your again, one of the core <laughs> tenets of this whole psychological structure is that they want to punish and degrade and demean and humiliate biological life. And it won't just be people, it will also be animals. So sometimes you'll see psychopaths don't treat animals very well. In other cases, they might actually appear to be obsessed with animals, but then it turns out that when you really get down to the core of it, they love to be involved with beings they can control. Animals can be controlled more easily than people. Well, so, so he's just, he's doing a very poor job of describing the dark triad for psychopaths. Yeah, which, you know, They use the serial killers where they're torturing animals and sexual abuse and, and uh, all that, that sort of stuff. What this has to do, because... We still don't know fucking anything about uh, uh -huh. Thomas Crooks, so I don't know how he's reached the conclusion that this is uh, an appropriate diatribe to describe the boy, but uh, I guess maybe he'll Psychopaths tie it together. become incredibly obsessed with animals because you can yell at them, you can dominate them, you can degrade them, and they won't fight back because they're dependent on you and they're wired for this. Well, they don't speak English. Yes, yes. So that's, the point that's is, the getting biggest, back to kind the it, yeah. that there is an energetic component to life and vitality. And there's two ways that you can get energy. You can get energy by creating love and creating happiness, in which case someone else feels inspiration. And inspiration, in, in my spiritual philosophy that I teach, inspiration is the mind of the creator. When you feel inspired, when you feel uplifted, when you feel happy, loving, that's getting you closer to the original mind that the uh -huh. universe was created from, the one infinite creator. That is God or Christ consciousness. So a lot of times we worship the sources of inspiration that we get, and that's inappropriate. I don't want people worshiping me. Oh, I've never yes, allowed a... yes. <laughs> Please don't worship me as your God and Savior. It could not be uh, further from the truth. One of the things I've been noticing that David does is he won't make the grand claims that he really wants to make, like, uh, you know, himself being uh, the savior of mankind and things like that. But what he does like is when people in his chat make those claims. Yeah, because I would never say it, but if you did... Yeah, but, they, you know, then he can read it. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it, but you're saying it. <laughs> That'd be so crazy if you thought I was God. ...around me. I've never allowed any type of weekly meetings or anybody to even really come in my physical space and be a supporter. Um, I've been very, very alone. Well, you kind of did with Corey, though. There was like a whole thing around that, actually. There was a big issue. And I don't want people to do that. I don't want to have a cultish mentality. That's why for two years after my divorce, I basically didn't even do anything. I wasn't doing videos. Oh, I just that, on that's why. Oh, oh, you didn't want a cultish following the after reason, the divorce. The reason I got fat and hid from the yeah. public is because he didn't want a cult following. I had, wasn't fat and divorced. Yeah. I didn't. I just didn't want people thinking that I was God. It had nothing to do with the no. severe depression. No. And I was happy. 
Oh, yeah. I don't oh, need okay. to be a public I figure. I don't happy. need to have how many we got. 5,300 people are watching right now already. See, that's that's the exact fucking thing. I don't need all these people, 5,300 people. <laughs> As he starts smiling yes. the second he reads it. I mean, that's great, and I thank you for being here, but the point is, Oh, you don't yeah. want that to control you. You don't right, want to be attached right. to I'm sure you'd being a be doing figure, this if you had no fame, one watching. Success. You yeah. want to be able, as a spiritual seeker, to be just as happy by yourself as you are with the adulation from others. And I live by that. I, I'm very happy alone. In fact, in some ways, it's preferable. But what I see now is that I have is an obligation it? to share what I know because the world uh, is in he trouble. He tells himself that. And if I don't share what I know, then everybody else suffers along with me because I believe that I have information that's very valuable. Could and you, the numbers support that. I have almost unilateral support. Could you maybe share that Very, very, very small number of haters. Way, it's like point zero 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 one percent Almost statistically <laughs> insignificant. There's like hardly he anybody just, doing that. It doesn't bother him. He just keeps coming back to it week after week yeah. after week. It's a very small amount. It's only one guy, actually. And that's because Steve most people Canada. are not psychopathic. It's approximately 4% of men, 2% of women. Most of them would never still be watching after 40 minutes of hearing this. They get very angry when you start talking about love and compassion, all the Christ principles. They hate that Christ stuff. They just do not appreciate that mentality because for them, the world is about power, the world is about dominance, and they ultimately want to punish life. And so this is where fascism comes in, what? where there are people what? who support a structure know. in the government that creates enormous pain for the public. They like that. They like seeing people in pain. They like seeing freedoms being restricted. They like seeing your rights being taken away. And so they will get behind this, even though... The classic lesson that nobody seems to learn is that these people in power will betray you anyway, even if you are their constituency, even if you love them and support them. Even if them, you're gay. They don't care. <laughs> and got the now, vaccine. There's an energetic component to this. It's very it. fascinating. The negative extraterrestrials actually feed on your fear, right. your Loose anger, energy. your sadness, your depression. If you're feeling bad, they are sucking energy from you. And so we hear from many different insiders that this is called louche. And so one of the sayings is give Lucius his louche. And so louche represents Is that a saying? what? Just I've, like if you have ants, right? There are, ants will go out there that. and they will eat feces. If if your dog poops, you'll get bugs on it. What? Bugs just think that's someone's got to get David to to cut these lectures down a bit. <laughs> this he needs an editor because this is we have not gotten to one point. No, this, this started thirty eight minutes ago at. Did you guys see what happened to Trump? And now we're at ants eat shit. <laughs> they, David, they, I could make this so much better. Just give me a call. We should uh, we we should just download this video and cut it together where it's only the parts that matter. It, it'd be five it'd be a, minutes long. It'd I'm be sure, a but fucking a ten minute video. It's a well, short. In, in the energetic worlds, we have positive and negative beings. Negative beings feed on this negative energy, and what will happen is that people who are psychopathic especially when they disassociate into that rage child That's personality. Us. There is a very direct telepathic link that they have with negative entities. So when you start arguing with somebody who goes into a rage tantrum, -uh. you're arguing with them <laughs> and you're arguing with demonic entities that telepathically couple with them. And well, those you demonic have to make it sound so cool, David. Them when they Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> David, you're gay as hell, dude. You're gay as fucking hell, dude. Damn, you're channeling the devil. <laughs> and typically what it feels like is kind of this rush in the chest. It's this sort of high that you get. And it actually does create a, a secretion of serotonin and endorphins that has a morphine, opiate-like effect on the brain. It's just no, it doesn't. So not quite as good. No, not quite as good as that. It's also an energetic component. It's, where it's fun, but it's will... not heroin. Yes, yeah, said like a man who's never done opiates. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a true statement. It'll take most of the energy, but then it will kick some back to you. Oh my and God, you will get, get high off point. of bringing another person into a state of severe distress. And again, you can kind of feel it as this rush in your chest, this kind of feeling of high, this power dominance thing. You get this invigorating rush. You feel very alive while you're being angry and while you're dominating someone. Fair that egg. is the negative path. <laughs> and their brains, again, are not wired to feel Just nodding love off and calling positive. him gay. <laughs> so gay when hell. they start to drain your energy, oh. gay as hell. we actually know, for example, that in the study of Burlakov, he took fish eggs. This is a uh, Russian scientist. Uh, and he found uh, out that if you take stronger <laughs> eggs and you put them next to weaker fish eggs, the stronger eggs will suck the life force out of the weaker fish eggs. And okay, uh, this study does not exist, or at least it does not publish online. There's there's other Berlikov studies that are published on PubMed, but none of them are about this. It's and just every time. All the information that comes from this study, it's people citing this study, like what David is doing right now, but no one actually has the fucking study. I would like to see it if it's out there, but... Uh, well, it's not. Yes, I, I mean, I guess that really is... <laughs> it's... Nah. These types of claims, you should have all this stuff ready to go. He should have a fucking section on his website that lists all this stuff out.
Well, four and a half hours wasn't enough time to get to it. Yeah, maybe next week. <laughs> and the weaker fish eggs wither and die. And what was so strange about the Burlakov effect was that when he to put study this, I a bought eight thousand dollars worth of caviar. Two different types of eggs. <laughs> this effect stopped. I couldn't afford dinner Last after that. Yields ultraviolet <laughs> photons. Whereas if you put quartz in there, quartz is a good to sugar daddy, to ultraviolet light. Crackers and caviar. And the ultraviolet Dear daddy, flows, I spent too much fish on fish egg caviar. <laughs> Please send so money. So we do have. That's just one example. There's plenty of others, including <laughs> the work of Dr. Glenn Ryan, where he actually showed people taking a sample of tissue from a placenta. And if you get angry and you hold this placental tissue in your hand, uh -huh. the cells start dying. And he was able to measure well, this because well, they're I, not attached I, yeah. to the body. <laughs> I don't think that's it. what's causing it. You could actually do that and think about anything, and that would yeah. be the result. It's because the cells, don't they're not connected to the system keeping them alive anymore. 80 nanometer light is a function of the health of DNA. Oh, DNA captures 280 up. nanometer light. <laughs> shut up. So if you start killing DNA, it doesn't capture as much of the 280 nanometer light, and more of the light will pass through the tissue sample. So sure enough, when people got angry at that tissue sample, they killed the DNA. And God this damn tissue, <laughs> fucking last finish, time you betray me. Is. So you do it before and after. And this is so just So we have multiple like scientific examples. My God, I went through it, it died. Source do you think that's because I yelled at it? There's academic references in there. You only need 150 for a PhD. Okay, that was just you, my first book. I've written But you don't, don't have a PhD. So I do have I like that he thinks you get the PhD just by reading the number of books. Right, you get it for the citations, which also is why he... You know, 150 for a PhD, he does happen to say he read 300 books, which would be yeah. enough for two PhDs. Double paid PhD. Won't challenge you on the facts. I believe they he just said try he to insult your character and call you a before. grifter, a con artist. These typical things I've been hearing for 28 years since I first got online in 1996. Well, maybe because they're true. But nonetheless, <laughs> yeah, I have after a while. Facts, and so, really, most of the people who attack me are psychopaths. Oh. And I've been dealing with this for my entire career. And I also dealt with it growing up because I was the smart kid in school. Oh, oh, oh right. I forgot. Yeah. So it turns out you were so as I smart said, you had no friends. The stronger eggs next to the weaker eggs, <laughs> and they, the weaker they eggs push die. them down Monkey Hill. If you hold this placenta tissue and you get angry, the placenta tissue dies. Okay. I wish someone would but, hold minute, you David, and be angry. Just say, <laughs> what's this have to do with the president? That if I shield well, ultraviolet... Donald Trump is just like fish eggs. Oh, and, okay. and I, the only thing I could think of here is maybe the, the healthy bodies around him, per, like gave him the energy that caused him to not. Die, something like that but that's not going to be the case because david is actually going to claim he is the one who saved trump hell yeah light from the tissue sample that the weaker eggs do not die it, it, it requires ultraviolet photons to go through this little passageway that if you know if you shield it they don't go through so could i do something like that no yes oh. hell yeah <laughs> the equivalent of having that uh glass shield because remember the glass was what stopped it from happening the glass was blocking ultraviolet light how do you block the loss of energy from your body? You block it through boundaries. If you have healthy boundaries, if you set the boundaries, these people cannot drain your energy. Uh -huh. and it turns out that the way that they're draining energy, on the metaphysical level, if you have spiritual vision, it actually looks like cords. It actually looks like wires okay. or tunnels of energy that go between you and the other person. I've heard about this. And these in, tunnels can in go over a Reiki long distance. There's no stuff. Dis One of the things they do in Reiki is like cord cutting, where they, they go yeah. around and they fucking snip at you. Well, David got his butt chakra violated. <laughs> of energy. It's involved. This is so if somebody could be fighting chakra. with you on the phone, you could be in Tokyo, and they, and they could be in New York. And you have this argument with somebody in Tokyo. It doesn't matter the distance. They can create right, But hold on. That's just emotions. If you, you can get mad and be mad, like you don't, the person doesn't have to physically be in the room to make you mad. Yeah, I'm quite upset at the moment. David is nowhere near us. He, no, he didn't even say this today. He said it a week ago. And if they start breaking you down, one of the things that happens is that you crunch over. And so, mm. sure enough, Wilhelm Reich, who was the protege of of uh, Freud, talked about this concept of orgone energy, which he related to sexual orgasm, hence orgone. And that, sure Man, enough, like when people over really like are this fascinated and, and with you end up coming. developing bad yeah. posture, it's very important this is from a lifetime them. of people sucking your energy. And we always talk about, oh, they're an energy thief. They're sucking energy. <laughs> you well, suck the energy out orcs. of the penis. You can't see them visually, but if you had the ability to look at auras, you would. Eating is so actually is makes you aura stronger. Your energetic field that then translate into damaged areas within the body. So uh -huh. your energy is remotely drained through these cords, and they are related to damaged areas in the body. Now... Yoga and therapeutic massage can actually heal this damage. Okay. And this is what we call the initiation of the body. So what, what do I mean by that? What I mean is That's that a great if question, you actually David. do this type of therapy that my therapist does called SE or somatic experiencing, then what happens is 
they will have you hold on to a traumatic memory in your mind, something very upsetting. They don't even have you tell them what it is. You don't ever talk about what the memory is. Uh -huh. And then they just have you follow the memory as you're holding it in your mind and, and notice your body. you got to tune to your by body. By the way, this is literally what they do in Scientology auditing sessions, yeah. with the exception you're supposed to talk out the memory, but he's saying they just do it in the mind. He's taking off my pants. <laughs> Where does it feel strange? He's calling me gay. So, like, for right. example, the only time my father really ever hit me <laughs> what? was that he poked me in the shoulder with okay, his... David, that's not being hit. That's... Hey, hey. Index finger, like he, a bunch he of times, probably should have hit you. Don't to be you honest. ever say "f you" to me uh, again. And it was like jabbing me really strong. Oh, I should have slapped you if you told him. The only time you. he ever actually did anything like that. Well, it turned out that when I had other events happen that reminded me of that trauma, I started to get this glaring pain oh. in that part of my arm. No, Daddy, no. <laughs> this is one angry example. Daddy got so, <laughs> It also turns out that I had injuries that were caused by bullies, such as they threw me down Monkey Hill. Oh my uh, God, I'm very psychic. There it is on my saucer, and I got airborne off of the jump. Right. Which you're not supposed to do, you're supposed to lean in, but I never practiced. I fell 30 feet through the air, the sh saucer shattered, and I had extensive damage to the soft tissue in my right hip area. Mm -hmm. So then when it got to be COVID time, I started to eat, you know, takeout every day. Okay. Uh, uh, injuries that happen when you're, no, you're, you're 10 or 11 years old, those typically don't follow you into your 50s. No, that's why you got fat. And they're typically not brought about by eating takeout. He got fat because his dad house. yelled at him. Next right. you know, I can't bend his over dad more than halfway. I had arthritis. And then he toboggan down my monkey hill. Me tie my shoes. <laughs> and that's when I began getting therapeutic oh, massage. Oh, no wonder she left. Yeah. yeah. Yoga will help as well, but it's massage works to bend about 500, 600 shoes. Good call. So again, this is the initiation of the body. It turns out that these injuries develop scar tissue where the muscles are locked together in funny ways. And then they go into atrophy, which means there's no blood flow. I still have no idea. You don't have blood flow in those areas. The tissue anything. starts to rot. It doesn't have and anything to do with anything. The tissue starts to rot, according to the law of one and other teachings. I think he just wants to talk about his body work. Maybe he worked out some sort of deal where he would promote this lady's business in exchange for like, like free, free, yeah. free therapy. Yeah, this is payola. That forms a habitat for negative entities. Negative you can entities use my like promo code in her office. In your body. So they will actually live there. It's like you built them a little doghouse, and they can live in the doghouse. Uh huh. So woof, woof, what it woof. turns out to be is that when you start to go through your traumatic memories, and if you do this traumatic. practice with any therapist or you can do it by yourself, just start to think about something that upset you. Yeah, relive your traumatic memories your body, by you yourself. Body, you know, yeah, over and over. Over here. Do that. That's and a good idea. you might find out, yeah, you know what, I injured myself there. And so this is also called engramic memory or an engram. This is another name for it. Wait, that, that's literally Scientology. Oh my God! What if David gets sucked into Scientology? Oh, he didn't. This isn't a therapist, David. You walked into a Scientologist. Wait, That's I, where his money's going. Hold on a fucking second, because engrams are a, I, I think, a specifically Scientology type thing. Uh, science direct. I, I is a unit of cognitive information. Yeah, Dianetics. Yeah. Okay. That's this is. Oh, David. He is the world's greatest sucker. He's the easiest mark. There is just nothing this man won't fall for. God damn it. It's so cool. <laughs> he just, there is nothing that is too outlandish. He will fall for He fell for the Nigerian prince scam. Now he's getting sucked into Scientology. It just does not matter. Yeah, there's no con he won't fall for. David will fall for it. But it's very real. Oh, yeah, it also relates real. to the Kabbalistic notion of the tikkun. <laughs> This is a, you know, if when speaking about reality, it is actually relatively rare to have to tell everyone the thing I'm talking about is real. Yeah. Most of the time, like if I was describing a MRI machine or something, I wouldn't have to repeatedly say, and it's actually real. Yeah, no, totally real. It's totally real. Most of the time someone uses that type of terminology is to describe something that's not real. Very unreal, <laughs> yes. yes which is the concept of the shattered vessel of light. Now, what does that mean? In the Your Kabbalistic tradition, <laughs> we are analogized on a spiritual level. Our energy um. field is typically kind of like an ovoid egg shape. And what they say in the Kabbalistic tradition is that you have holes in your aura. Oh, yeah. And they don't talk uh, about yeah. the cords necessarily, but the yeah, holes someone tried to are where the cords are getting hole. in. So when somebody is abusing you, they're actually draining energy from your body, and the spigot or the nozzle is actually where David you just have walking around with the That's where there's a, a negative plug. energy that can create <laughs> Can't like leak out anymore. Outlet. To I'm cause your energy to drain energy out of your body, <laughs> go through this cord, and go into somebody else. So in the Kabbalistic sense of the tikkun, they say that you visualize your energy field as if it was a chalice, like a big bowl, okay? Now, in this case, my glass is able to hold water all the way up to the top. 
wow. if I had holes in the glass along here, then the water is going to drain out. Wow. And it will only wow. go as high as where the lowest hole is. Right. I figured so this out by poking holes in my cups. Field, which corresponds to <laughs> this is the only one I have left. <laughs> and you learn to live with the pain. You, you don't even this notice that your This is a $3,000 dollar crystal you glass. <laughs> Or your shoulders. I can't or live on this kind of money. <laughs> you just learn to get along Push with that pain. You learn to get along with scar tissue. You're not massaging it out. dollars of cameras. Dead body tissue in there, actually. I'm poor. You need blood flow. <laughs> so I actually I'm had a lot of this asshole. gut tissue. And uh, you fucking do. So for me, getting rid of under eye circles was all about therapeutic He's stuff. He's so goddamn vain, too. No, you had under eye circles because you were treating your body like shit. You were <laughs> fat and eating fast food every fucking day. Uh, the more that I healed probably the scar also the crying from your more that the circles your wife's getting fucked by I Marty had yeah, that, Those were the bags. Yes. Blood cells because my blood was <laughs> not flowing through about a third of my body. My whole right leg was Oh, that's why up. you couldn't get hard. Had problems right. in my shoulder from another injury I had where I fell on a garbage can. No, I'm not gay. It's Still blood flow. That work done again. <laughs> I take this stuff so seriously, <laughs> I've got these massive my scars aura. from cupping where I'm sucking out. As, as you, oh, you're as you sucking, destroy the scar tissue, the blood comes up at the surface of the skin, and then you just have to wait for it to drain. Uh -huh. So these shoulders would be an example of where people could have drained my aura. Oh. So getting back again to the tikkun, the shattered vessels to of his life. Shoulders. <laughs> what they say is that as you go through healing, through self-acceptance, you're you're closing up these holes in your aura, and then you can have yeah, more of just, this. What the Hindus call prana. Now, you know, if you poke a hole energy, in the can, the water comes out. Dave now you can't he's see how much light somebody metaphor. has in their body. He really, he thinks he's killing right Physically. now. Physically, it's it's a metaphysical vision, but. The more of this energy that you can store in your body, the more that you can heal the shattered I didn't shattered think I'd vessel, want the characters back the so bad. Have, I know. Give us an angry speaking. daddy. Yeah. That will lead to things like psychic Our ability, the power to psychically heal people, the power to have uh, telekinesis, potentially. Well, you but say even you on a simpler have level, that. Simpler than telekinesis is, is prophetic future insight. Just last week, he said that he uh, he like cut the tree branch off of his uh, the tree outside of his house yeah. using psychic energy when he was about to be on Art Bell. We'll start to see the future. You'll start to remember your dreams more. You'll start to have synchronicities more. This has to do with, again, storing well, personal power. that's just going crazy. So what you have to do... Well, when you look for all these things, you will see them more, as we have noticed, uh, based on the yeah. fact that we keep seeing synchronicity. That's just so, mental order illness. Two, like how I, it stopped at 50-50. This yeah. vessel to not have a bunch of holes in it is you have to plug the holes. Oh. And the traditional way in which we call plugging the holes would be cutting the cords. Because each hole represents where there's a cord that somebody can suck your energy. Well, wouldn't the issue be if there was a cord plugging the hole when you cut the cord, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think you're causing your own problem yeah, here. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's twisted his metaphor here. So my core spiritual teaching is the law of one, and this supports the existence of energy cores. Boo, here it is, law of one, boo. I what think you might call the silver quick. cord reflex. I think he only does That is when the like... mind-body-spirit complex, which is their word for a person. I think he only does all these different like levels of mind-body-spirit working together in a complex form. When you dwell without the environment of your physical body, and your physical body yeah, is disturbed. Okay. Again, remember we talked about injuries and that this kind of thing, This is not right? one of the hour-long Your physical shell is disturbed. <laughs> not yet. You massively call back the person who, in this case, is projecting out a body. I mean, there's That's clearly the something he about rambles about on experience. about for an hour and a half. And we'll get into that in a minute. This is about, they were asking a question, which I, we'll read in just a minute about. I mean, I, I imagine it eventually ties back to the Trump thing, because he really has not talked about it at all. The question is when, yeah. They moved the microphone cord. And then it damaged her physical body because she was out of body. What? And if you start to move things around over the person, Who got when they're in this trance microphone? state, you, you can actually wound them in the physical sense. So when the physical shell is disturbed, it will reflexively oh, call the person back the to the body using the silver chain. cord. Yeah, right, right, right. The mind-body-spirit complex is connected with what may be metaphysically seen as your, what your philosophers have called the silver cord. So then if you go backwards a little bit to not... Oh, wait a minute. Let's do this first. If this is done suddenly, the mind-body-spirit complex idiot. will attempt to re-enter <laughs> the, the energy webs of the physical vehicle dummy. without enough care, and the effect is as if you stretch an elastic band and let it snap back rapidly. The resulting snap strikes hard at the anchored portion of the elastic band. This actually causes physical damage. So going back now to question number nine, session 91. What occurred when we moved these microphone cords? Because they had microphones over her body. And Ra, which is again Archangel Michael, as I've said in many other shows, it's showed up in each... Oops, I'm sorry, you didn't see that. Fucking I was on myself. Idiot. I already made a mistake here. Damn it. So what Damn occurred it. when the microphone cords were slightly moved? And then Ra says, and this again is Archangel Michael slash the Egyptian entity. It's time traveling, so it shows uh, up in different right, capacities. Right, 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 right. Now, it, it is very funny to say that the entity in Law of One is called something other than Ra. Yeah. Seeing as it starts literally yeah. every single answer across all the books with the phrase, I am Ra. It's pretty Michael specific Popsy. about that, yeah. You would think at one point it might be like, I am also Archangel Michael, but it's pretty clear on the fact that it is Ra. Find out it's the same being. The link between the instrument's mind-body-spirit complex and the physical body was jarred because you're much more than physical body. That's why they call it complex. 
garbage. This caused some maladjustment of the organ you call the lungs. Oh, yeah, because the and microphone if the repair had not moved. been done, this would right. have resulted in a distorted physical complex condition of the lungs in the physical body. So wait a minute. You mean to tell me that just because there's this cord that people travel out of their body through, uh -huh. and then they snap back into the body through the cord, that if they do this too fast, that if that, that, that cord alone is enough to cause physical damage to the lungs that could manifest as bronchitis, coughing, all this kind of stuff. That's exactly what they're saying. That's what's so weird about this. <laughs> now, this is as far as the law of one went on the discussion of energy cords. I mean, there's other projection. places we could go with the love and light the discussion. Too quick. That love is the pure energy and light is the conduit. But I, I'll get into that in another session. No, oh, okay. Oh, the point yeah, is yeah, that yeah. we have photons in God the universe. God forbid we get off track. Photons travel yeah. through tunnels <laughs> that you could liken to wormholes. Uh -huh. So when you know somebody is, is hating like on you, they're creating a wormhole <laughs> into your orbit. I'm getting pounded it. so hard that they can draw energy out of you, and that's again the tikkun shattered vessel of light. If you have these holes in your aura, we've got too many metaphors going tissue, on. Yeah, he's mixing too many that things becomes here like for a power me. outlet. The negative entities can live inside there because it's rotting and smelly in that part of your body. You might even have pus come out, you know, cyst or something. Ew. They can actually use that so that when somebody else attacks you, and you start crunching down because you feel victimized. They're actually able to drink off of your energy, this vital energy that you have. They drink some of that out of the glass. What? It makes them high. It makes them feel good. And especially it gives more to the negative entity. Okay. I think if I'm hearing this right, the idea is, like, say you were to start verbally assaulting me. What uh -huh. would happen is I would... You would hunch over. I would hunch over, and which would... exposes my, my auric cords. Oh, okay. And then my, my hurt energy would beam forth from my shoulders. Oh, I'd suck the sweet nectar and out of you. And you would drink it out. Now, how that occurs, seeing as I don't think anyone has ever deliberately attempted to do that, I don't know how he came to this conclusion. <laughs> but, yeah, just a fucking anteater nose trying to with them. suck your shoulders. So this is energy. absolutely real. Uh, and so, again... Again... It's a very safe bet. Anytime he says that, you can just assume the last 30 seconds have not been real at all. Complete nonsense. Yeah, I think in terms of realness, uh, an angry guy sucking your shoulder energy is probably the least realistic thing he's said so far. Bit low on my list. There's many different spiritual traditions that, where people become master initiates. Um. They learn to see this connection between the physical body and these energy cords that people use to suck energy out of you. And this is why almost every major <laughs> spiritual teaching has some type of body practice, like uh, yoga, like uh, you know stretching of some kind, tai chi. Yeah, but you don't do work any meditation, of that. And all of these physical bodily You're just disciplines, a, a you know, long, long hiking. Old man. Yeah. Everybody who becomes a master initiate pretty much gets their body in perfect shape. They end up looking great. They're muscularly ripped. They've got a brilliant looking body. Well, and that's you oh, have to. Well, hold on, can. Now, apparently not everyone. <laughs> Hold on a second. He has said before that due to him, you know, shoveling the snow and stuff, he said he's looking pretty jacked these days. That's true. Now, I tend to agree more with your assessment that I think he's mistaking being fat for jacked. I'm bulking. Yeah, like he has more physical mass. I don't think there's much uh, muscle to it. To in order to build muscle and really get a good physique, you have to. Oh heal. yeah, this is this is what I want to hear from David. In the in the mirror, yeah. just like <laughs> I look so fucking ripped. He probably has like a funhouse mirror yeah. that bends the biceps. These areas, because if your muscle doesn't get blood flow, then you can't build any extra muscle. So even things like weight training, weightlifting, that kind of stuff will help you to heal these areas because the repetitive use of the muscle. But I don't do any of those knots. But again, it's for fat. really the best. Not thing for me. Massage. The Edgar Casey readings, which I've talked oh, about. Oh, the many best times. thing is, <laughs> yeah. What, what a fucking pampered boy! Now everyone, all the assholes out there, they're gonna lift weights yeah. and work out. They go to the gym. gym. I'm gonna do the best thing, which is get a massage. I call the local mama son. Yeah, I'm gonna do the real hard work, which is paying an Asian lady to rub my body. One Can muscle massage, please. Parts. <laughs> and so there's a physical component to this, but then there's also a Do I look ripped? Oh, yes, yeah, uh, a David song. You, you look like a super jack. You look a you know super what, jack. I feel this thing on my shoulder over here. And again, I had this thing with my shoulder. Uh -huh. So you can really learn a lot by working with the body, <laughs> doing stretching. Can you? I mean, you could. You have a roller he that you work with on the floor. It's about five inches wide. It's a big, long cylinder. And you hang your back over there. You crunch all the spine vertebrae. popping. You hang your shoulders over it, one side, the other side. You get your neck in there. That kind of, you, you bend over and over. arch your back. <laughs> I was like, he's like, ooh, he's uh, sweating up a storm. He's in peak physical form. <laughs> he's, he's broke. He's sweat through. He's wearing an undershirt. He has sweat through two shirts. In an hour. Recording uh, this. Well, it's probably, you know, he's excellent shape.
over it one side, the other side, you get your neck in there. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff is incredibly, incredibly useful and beneficial. Right. If you ignore well, these areas of scar tissue in your muscles, you. then you have outlets that people can drink energy through. So that's why you have to initiate the body and not just the mind. With the mind, the main practice to create that ultraviolet barrier, right, to stop this energy from leaving you like the fish eggs that get drained out by the stronger fish eggs. Okay. It's about setting We're boundaries. Back to this. Uh -huh. Psychopaths basically will... This really, this has been a one-hour diatribe yep. about the psychopaths online who criticize him, who, by the way, do not bother him whatsoever. Nope, not no, at all. Not in the slightest. You have to let me violate <laughs> you because you are ugly. I'm going to spend 25% of this talking about you're not worthy him. enough to get any better treatment than what I'm giving you. I'm the one that has to put up with you being so ugly. Oh, <laughs> so oh the, yeah, it's really a burden for you. Principle. They yeah, want yeah, to make yeah. you feel denigrated so that you feel like, well, if I'm ever going to have anybody love me, I need to let them violate me. That's not true. Oh, boy, that, that sound bite ah, buddy. is, hold on, 5808. Well, if I'm ever going to have anybody love me, I need to let them violate me. That's not ah, true. Ah, Dave, you can't keep giving us this. So I just want to make sure there's all this white mess on my oh, face. Oh, boy. <laughs> but this is happening on a global level. There's a global oh, adversary who wants you to feel ugly. Violate and therefore, you. you need to be violated. You need to put up with all the dark stuff that they're going to Rape do. me. Rape me. So in the Tibetan tradition, they have this That's amazing love. thing called Rainbow Body. <laughs> where people oh, are... this is the thing. Uh, the, the, the guy who emailed us a few a while back, I believe this is the stuff that he said David uh, jacked from him, the Rainbow Body stuff. Oh, through this meditative practice to only have positive, happy thoughts. And if you have only happy thoughts for 13 years, then you get to be on this rainbow body. Your we body know. will actually change bring into this some up type of form. We'll he show used you to do, he used to have one of his stand-up bits for back yeah. in the days. He would bring this up and he'd say, you'd have to have a positive thought, only positive thoughts for 13 years. And then he'd say, but like, oh, I got cut off in traffic on the way here, so it looks like I've got to start over. And that, was, <laughs> yeah. that would bring down the house. And then the gays took the rainbow from it. Yes. <laughs> But people literally transform Now rainbow body, body means something very different. Yes. This was documented 160,000 times. And when you read about what they say on how you achieve this ascension, this rainbow body, the main teaching that you keep hearing over and over again is cord cutting. And this is where, in meditation, you would visualize that you have some type of knife or dagger or sword. Mm -hmm. And as and you going bring up traumatic memories, things wrist, people did that so hurt you, things that are painful, the next three hours. You, you imagine that there's these cords coming out and that each person who hurt you, each person who drained you, who made you feel bad about yourself, who said, you have to let me violate you because you are ugly. God. Just cut that cord. <laughs> cut it off. Uh, uh, what you're actually doing also is you're doing body work and breath work. Stop saying violate. You have to let me violate. Are, are <laughs> so you visualize the only way to get a rainbow cords. body. They yeah. that you use a sword. And this is a remarkably consistent meditation that you see worldwide. You see it in Native American shamanism. There's Celtic practices of this kind of stuff. And you see it all throughout Buddhist traditions. It's really fascinating because, again, cord cutting is the key. If you leave these cords open, it's because you don't love yourself enough. Mm. You don't oh, feel worthy right. as a human being. And you say, well, you know, I'm just a mess. I'm ugly. I'm not good enough. And so, yeah, this is the only way I'm going to get love. Sound bite. So then when you go <laughs> through meditation violated, practice, yeah. you go into solitude. You're no longer feeling that you need somebody to lift you up anymore. You, you've been able to, you know, get a grip on that. You can experience solitude and not be upset by it. Now, you don't oh, feel the need. I'm confused here. Is only the side that is being attacked able to do these meditations? Or wouldn't us, wouldn't we as the psychopaths also have the capability to watch one of the many cord cutting Reiki videos on YouTube? And, no. Oh, I guess that's right. No. <laughs> YouTube probably blocks me from watching. You're incapable. You'll start to bring up traumatic you memories. Watch interrogation and somebody that tried to make you feel bad about yourself. And then you'll visualize that you have a cord that goes from you to that person. And you visualize that this is like a stargate. Like every time should that you be feel bad about yourself, that person is getting energy from you. And then in love, in loving yourself, you cut the cord. You visualize that you have a little knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, you cut that cord. And now you are building up your shattered vessel of light. That's just like a presidential assassination. So that the vessel can hold more water and you have Same more personal thing. power by cutting the cords. So this is one of the two main Tibetan rainbow body practices. Another very important one at the same time is seeing yourself as empty awareness. Uh -huh. And empty awareness is the concept that you might hear about called the void. Okay, but is this the is idea just meditation. That you go from feeling that you are your body to feeling that you've now kind of flipped inside out and the whole world around you is you. You might even want to feel like you can touch that. You might even want to feel like, as this is what the Tibetans would do. They'd be in the mountains, meditating on a mountain yeah, that's view. That's exactly what they would do. beautiful scenery and then They'd saying, I am the stars, <laughs> I am the sun, I am the sky, I am the clouds, I am the mountains, I am the trees, I am the animals. All of this is but me. I am not gay. And it's awareness <laughs> that is ultimately empty. It is without form. Despite the, the rainbow empty, body. <laughs> it has no space, it has no time. And this again is the highest level teaching in the law of one, foreverness. 
once you learn the concept of timelessness and foreverness, that you are not a body, that you are not physical, and that all of the universe is a holographic projection holographic. of the awareness that is within your mind, that's a really trippy psychedelic concept that you created the universe. You are the creator. You are the, you're inside Plato's cave and everything that you see around you is really just a flickering shadow. Uh -huh. It's a fascinating meditation and this is what they did. And it turns out that once you do this enough and you cut the cords, by cutting the cords, you realize that you are whole and sovereign and pure. You don't need to drain your energy to other people. If somebody doesn't see you as a perfected, loving, perfect being, then they are the ones existing in, you know, illusion now oh, okay uh, couldn't he have just said that sentence an hour and two minutes ago we yeah probably cut out, we probably cut out the rest of that and so you want to penetrate the illusion that's but how we understand you want to yeah break yeah, through yeah. we need this illusion that you are only a body incredibly drawn into out this metaphors. concept that you are the creator you are empty awareness and that's what we would call the christ consciousness if you're looking at the casey readings so jesus was not just here to be worshiped and adored he according to the casey readings created the christ path uh -huh. which is for you to recognize the christ within yourself yeah. Which is this loving consciousness yeah, that's in that the, the you feel Gospels. when you are inspired. So like people worship rock stars, celebrities, Days this is because Wilcock. they feel inspired by their work. And if you project it outside yourself, then you haven't really gotten to the point of understanding that you are the source of the universe. It's the universe, right? Y O U Ooh. universe. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Get them. Oof. That Get is em. some real douchey shit. <laughs> It's the universe. universe. <laughs> that's that's some fucking Tony Robbins three gay uh, hell yeah shit. So this, there was a breakthrough book that happened where these teachings got broken out of the secrecy of Tibet, and it was Dream Yoga and the Practice of Natural Life. Namkai Norbu. Namkai Norbu. <laughs> Hell yeah. And is that one of those again, aliens what we're seeing there with the two eyes Disney and then the movie? circle in the middle, that is this concept of what he calls the mother light or this empty awareness that the whole universe is made from. That is the universal creator, that you are the source of the universe that all projects out of you, and you notice that shape that he's got on his chest, that is the Tigli. So they actually what? drew his face on the cover of the <laughs> book. So know. you look at the guy sleeping there. <laughs> notice that face. Well, this is Namkai Norbu. Oh, look, look at so him. Is that a guy? He actually or... got in a hell of a... I think so. ...a lot of trouble because these teachings were considered it's highly classified. Yeah. <laughs> and more. They did not believe... He did some things to anybody students. outside of their own little David, circle. this is another thing David has fallen for. This used to be a very common marketing practice. Is, uh, you know, they would say, like, someone has stolen the secrets from a group, and now they've written this book to expose it to other yeah. cultures. That's not the case. He just wrote a fucking book. Yeah, he just he's, wrote a book. He's dude. just marketing that book to idiots like David. Should have wow, this, but he, he Norbu, stole these secrets. Right here. Yeah. He went against and all published this. Published him on Penguin. He's yeah. out there in, yeah. the, in the open. Wrote a book. And this is where he talks about agent. that you merge with what he calls the mother light, this white light that is the empty awareness. And the way that they recommend you do this is by meditating on this shape that we saw on his chest called the, the tiggly. Tiggle. <laughs> and it's also the Sanskrit letter A. Uh, and so you, you make the sound letter of ah. So it's that concept of <laughs> A lot of times when I do live events, I'd end up uh, poning with everybody. I'd have them all do your pony. Uh, and just say ah. Uh, and you just hold that pitch for a long time. In this Tibetan visualization, what you're doing is you're actually visualizing that shape. Now, this, you don't right have there. to do it this way. Tiggle me this. But notice that I've there's rainbows of coming off of it. In my time. These the rainbows tigglers. represent the seven densities of existence. I'm seven of layers <laughs> of the universe that we can live on. Tiggle, which go from please. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So what you're doing is you're getting a visualization of yourself as the creator, that you are the primordial sound. In the beginning, there was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. That's in the book of John. Yeah. It's all just one giant run-on sentence. Hinduism has the same thing. Sentence. They call it the Aul. Yeah, pretty much. Buddhism has the same there's thing. Just, they call it the Tigli. Okay? There's just so then we see these various diagrams. No destination Where this is the original sight. form of the universe. We're it's really in the just middle a sound, of the Utah but you desert. the letter A <laughs> in Sanskrit. There's, there's not and then a they draw this rainbow energy hours. coming off of it, which is the formation of the universe. The whole manifest universe yeah. emerged from this sound. And here's Namkai Norbu pointing at it over his head yeah, he and doing like lectures on this stuff. Now, looks like a liar to me. It turns out that once you visualize this enough, that you are essentially the source of the universe and you're giving off this rainbow light. You're not fooling me, Namkai. The body actually Kai. turns into the rainbow light. Mm. And this is what happened to Padmasambhava, the second Buddha. Right. He actually ascended and left nothing behind. This is what it looked like. This is an up-close view. Yeah, that's view. probably what it looks like. Apparently gay what as happens hell, dude. when somebody merges probably with that like mother an light and they lollipop. become the pure awareness of the universe. Another example of this, of leaked information that comes out of Tibet, it oh, yeah, talks about this, stuff. is rainbow painting. A painting book. And again, the rainbow body and how you're painting the, the colors of the creator. That's the way that my oh, book, God, the, way, the book that I got had metaphors. that cover. Look at this, this coloring is probably book. what you have to see if you find it now. <laughs> Tulku Urgyen Rinpoche. Here's his picture. And again, this is a very technical book. Oh, it's very David dense. Wilcox, very Here's stupid. another example of one very of his books, the words of the Buddha. And here he is in front of a typical Tibetan Buddhist wall hanging. Uh, this is something I have a number of them around the house here, and I love to have them. 
pictures of Asian so he also men. got in trouble yes. by leaking a lot of information that really wasn't bedside. supposed to be known. <laughs> oh, no, Regarding Kai. the teachings of Papa the second Buddha, who actually went a lot farther than the first Buddha, believe it or not. And this is what his face ah. looks like, and we'll talk about why did he paint I, on his eyebrows and I kind of doubt that's what his face looks like. If you research Papa Sambhava, they say he did not have a mother or father. Looks terrified. He arrived in an egg that came out of the sky. We know what that is. That's a UFO. Yeah. That's what? Obviously, when you look at the whole history. Oh, I thought it was a stork. Yeah, I thought that's what he was going for, too. But he say, he's saying the second Buddha was an alien. Well, if he actually looked like what he just showed us, yeah, that might be true. It might be on Some the money. extraterrestrial human who came here to talk, teach us rainbow body. Um, he told the people that he came from the cosmos. And he had remarkable abilities as soon as he came out of this egg. As an adult, he landed in the egg. Um, and that's why Padmasambhava translates as lotus born, because apparently his egg opened up like petals of a lotus. Right, but a lotus spaceship, is a flower. And he not just an walks egg. out. So Padmasambhava means lotus born. He's also called Guru Rinpoche in the second Buddha, and that translates as precious guru. He studied existing Vajrayana Buddhism and he traveled through Nepal, Bhutan, India, Tibet, and surrounding lands. Uh-huh. Now there's some weird things about ah, his face. It's very because unnerving. when you look at these different images of him. It looks like he didn't have any facial hair. It looks like he didn't have eyebrows. He didn't have a mustache. Yeah. Yeah, and he painted it on with makeup. Can't blink anymore. He looks very with actually the Roswell images. Yes, I'm proposing that this was an extraterrestrial human who did not have eyebrows, did not have any facial hair, uh-huh. like cool. the Roswell entities, which again were not grays, but they just looked human but hairless, no eyebrows, no facial hair, and they had bigger eyes than we do. And they also had six fingers. And sure enough, you're going to see he left a six-fingered handprint. He mushed his hand into the rock outside of his own temple, and you can go there now and see that. Can you? So this is very interesting because sure. he again seemed to paint on his own facial features to you look can more do human. A lot of things. Because he really wasn't. Yeah. He was here to teach us something from the cosmos. So here he is on his spaceship. He's on a floating lotus. This is Padmasambhava. How he came here in a spaceship and he's got the rainbow around him. And this is another ah, image of him in sort of. I don't you can like really this see guy. that his eyes were bigger. Uh, and very intense look in his eyes there. And again, he's got these painted on features. Yeah, he looks, looks like he's tweaking. He's got yeah, a very open geeked. third eye as well. So, uh, and he looks like he has. Is that what skin enlightenment looks like? I mean, that's just the light that was coming off of him. But you see the, 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 like the, the, the circles <laughs> around him represent this Fucking energy field horns that up, said dude. they could see. Right? That was his own Isn't that a little bit what's going on here? energy field. Now, at the end of his life, he transformed into a rainbow. <coughs> and if gay. you meditate on the tickling yeah, long enough, or if you just meditate on empty awareness and cord cutting, well, thinking about eventually, the tickle's gonna nobody make is sucking your energy anymore. I'm not doing it. You cut the cords, and you you achieve rainbow body. No this, this is what it actually me. looks like. Nope, nope. Spontaneously is what happened to him. So he brought Buddhism from India into Tibet in the 8th century. This is why he was called, called the second Buddha. The indigenous Himalayan religion was called the Bon. And many, many witnesses said he had you know, extraordinary he so abilities. He easily transitions fly. into different topics that sometimes I almost don't even notice it. Yeah, he does it seamlessly. But it's just... He had telekinesis. He could apport things out of, of thin air. Make oh, physical. wait, okay, hold on. Uh, what are the odds David's going to say this is him? Oh, they're up there. Physical objects appear. He had the ability to telepathically communicate with people who normally couldn't do that. You could hear his voice in your mind. And he melded in the Buddhist teachings with the Bon and founded what we call the Nyingma sect, which is Tibetan Buddhism. At the end of his life, he spontaneously burst into light in this rainbow form. <laughs> yeah, okay. This caused Dude, great surprise and inspiration. And as I revealed in my prophecies and my first book, Source Field, there's 160,000 documented cases of I want light to self body immolate, but make it gay. That people have stored in monasteries in Nepal, Bhutan, China, India, and Tibet. 160,000 examples of people actually achieving the same phenomenon that he did, where they transform their physical body into rainbow-colored light. This is actually very real, believe it or not. Despite the it's lack of evidence. It's a very interesting augmentation of the Christian concept of ascension. The central practice that he taught everybody was called Dzogchen. It's also called Ati Yoga, or the Great Perfection. Now, the temple where he practiced these teachings and eventually achieved rainbow body is visited by many people each year. It's still there. I believe it's in uh, Nepal. Which one of those dilapidated oh, buildings sure, is it? Uh, I'm going to guess that one that looks like an Asian restaurant. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the town you got to go through. You walk up this staircase to the temple. This is what it looks like when you get to the top. It's a lot of stair climbing. You go higher and higher. Wow. You got to then walk through this weird little alleyway between Amazing. the wall and the rocks. They built the building right next to the wall. You see wow, that arch in the background? That's the Papa Sambhava that, Temple. So you go through this little crack, and then you see this little altar that you can make offerings on. It's got candles on it, all that kind of stuff. And then you see that hole next to the altar in the is wall. Is this what see... it's come to is we just now get David's vacation photos? Pretty much. That there's a wall made of rock and there's a doorway there. Wow. That's where uh-huh. he was, folks. Another wall. So now we're going to go oh, up that's the closer. cave he dwelt in. This is where in. he actually was. He meditated in there. And this is where a lot of the rainbow body stuff was achieved. So we're looking at it from different perspectives. Here's a monk meditating outside. Now we're going to get a little bit closer. You can walk in through this door. Apparently it was carved out. And whoa, what's that? That is his handprint, folks. Once is he it? had gotten through enough of the great perfection, I, he was close to achieving rainbow body. I guess. He started to be able to mush his hand into the rocks, and that's what you're seeing right here. Okay, but hold on. 
One, two, three, four, five. Looks pretty five-fingered to me. Am I right? I'm not counting that that wrong. There's one here, and there's two, three, four. Where's where's six going around the rest of the hand? Where is that sixth one? Here, it's really fascinating because check this out. Uh oh, I guess he's gonna say that, isn't he? Oh. Now that doesn't look like a finger though, because it's incredibly oddly shaped. It kind of like, just looks like yeah, deformation. Yeah, it's like someone pinched. Uh, it looks like bow tie pasta. Check out how many fingers he's got. There's actually six fingers on the hand. No, that was it's his not penis. four. It's actually, it's, there's nothing, he was there's jerking a thumb, it. And then yeah. There's five fingers, and you can see it very clearly. People go up, they touch it. You're you're allowed to touch it, believe it or not. And this was all because he had the ability now to mush his hand through matter. Much like Neo in the Matrix, you know, you become oh, the Matrix. Yeah, I'm sure You're no longer just like Neo. bound by physical flesh and blood. So there's lots and lots of different pictures of this. What a waste of now, a great Father power. Now, Father Francis Tissot, yeah, with the help of the Institute of Letter trick. Sciences, <laughs> in modern times, he actually went to Tibet to, uh, to see some like of the way that guy Rainbow Bots, because they still do this Yeah, I know what he was practice. going to Tibet for. He's a nice person for 13 years, and you can actually spontaneously change into the Rainbow Body. The I person think that this Father Tissot witnessed do this a rainbow body was Kenpo Achos. He was changing some and we'll children have some other into him. people who <laughs> achieve rainbow body in a minute. But there's two different types of rainbow body. There's one type, which is like Padma Sambhava's, where you flash into it all at once. And there's another type where your body shrinks down over the course of seven days and you leave behind a little tiny six or seven inch tall human figurine made out of ash, which is the image of your body. Yeah, that sounds real. Actually no, that sounds up, pretty cool. Now, I have heard, I can't remember what sect it is, but there is like a certain group of people when they're dying, they start drinking some sort of basically uh, like embalming fluid almost that cool. preserves their body as they die. But I, I haven't heard the part about them shrinking down into being little, you know, figurines. Wow. Maybe that's what happened to David's airplane. Maybe that was a real it plane that real shrunk size? down to... So there's a lot of really cool stuff in Tibet. These toy stupas, size. Uh, look like UFOs that we've seen in the ships. that they, The mothership they found in Antarctica had UFOs in it that looked like this. So the stupas are very interesting. This is one of the main Buddhist temples in Tibet, the nice rainbow next to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. So how do you get into rainbow body in the Dzogchen teaching? Well, you're going back to the natural primordial state of being, which is empty awareness. And you have to do cord cutting to get there. The teachings and meditations are aimed to achieve this condition the pure, all-encompassing, primordial clarity, the nature of all beings. This is stuff you read in Rainbow Painting and in the other books. This has no form, no time, but it is the nature of the universe, as I said. The timeless clarity has no form of, it own, of its own, and yet <laughs> it can perceive, experience, reflect, and express all form. And it does so without being affected by these forms in any ultimate permanent way. So you see yourself as like a mirror reflecting the complete openness of the universe, but you are not affected by the reflections. And this, again, relates to cord cutting. You don't want to be affected by people who tried to hurt you in the past and steal your energy. And again, eventually you're going to reach this rainbow body if you do this practice enough. Then there's another thing called Trekcho, part of Dzogchen Buddhism. You realize this mirror-like clarity of the universe, and that brings you into a state called Rigpa, a state of knowledge. I wonder if he didn't have like, was physical practice needs, that is the fastest I way to achieve this would universal just knowledge or Rigpa. Do this 24/7. Trekpo, Trekcho Probably. Is about like and I don't think he would ever your stop and the and attention. In the cord cutting meditation, it's, you visualize a knife and you visualize it's cutting these cords. And it's a, it's about softening the body. My my ther massage therapist is always saying you got to soften on the table. You got to be soft on the table. So you eliminate the rigidity no, in your body. Your That's a very important penis. point. And as you learn to relax, <laughs> Why you the muscles soft ease on up, table? you are going into I do happy ending, but you stay soft. Practice. So Trek Cho has to do with cord cutting, very directly. You're mastering the art of contemplative visualization. You're meditating while you do this visualization of cord cutting that you're not going to be dragged down by people's negativity anymore. And the meditation occurs where you're in a state of unity consciousness. Again, they have you visualize the Tigli. You chant, ah, and you have this vision. Yeah, that is the happens. universe. Uh, it's you. You eventually, you become that rainbow. And say, uh, uh. <laughs> you purify yourself of all obscurations. This is done again through cord cutting. You witness your karma, which is part of the cord cutting. Who created your karma? Who upset you? Who made you angry? You don't want to be well, angry at anybody. You want to have compassion for yeah. You forgive and dissolve all of this karma until it holds no cause on you, correlated with the cord cutting. Your physical body eventually calms down into a death-like state where you have blissful, ecstatic consciousness. This is called samadhi. And you feel a deep state of union with your true identity on a conscious level. Now, the last stage of this process is called togal. Uh -huh. The final practice after you reach samadhi, your self-realization, like where you begin to become the universe. You become the essence of all there is. Um, your blockages, you know, karma, and thoughts are clear through the core cutting You rankings as of late. Nerd clusters. Mm. Excellent. They're like these little, they're kind of like uh, nerd ropes, but uh, they're little gummy clusters with nerds on the outside. Very tasty. They sound delicious. Yes, it's just like uh, your identity shifts into cosmic awareness. And at this point, <laughs> in Togal, 
Your physical body now dissolves into pure light, and you become the rainbow body, or the wisdom body, um. and the Tibetans call this Jalus. Now sometimes, people leave behind, as I said, this little seven-inch ashy figurine. Uh -huh. It's rare with like the Padmasambhava case where people just flash and all of a sudden they turn into a rainbow. Right. More often what happens is that you, you appear to die. Capture your, this your on the camera? Breathing, you think you stop so. Breathing. Usually you're in a state of meditation, so these people are in a meditative lotus posture. Then what happens is they take your body, it's no longer alive, and they wrap you up in these colorful silks, uh, and then you are laid down inside a particular hut where your body is kept for seven days. Now this is where it starts to get really, really weird because your body begins shrinking, and when they look through the silks, they notice that your the lines on your face go away. You reverse age. Your face uh -huh. becomes young looking again, and wow. it gets smaller and smaller. Is you actually reverse the growth process. For this? You shrink down, and well, eventually your it. body turns into this well, little figurine of ash. And this now, if you're really curious true. about what this looks like, I'm going to show it to you okay. through the examples of people who actually achieved this in modern times. So let's take a look at some examples. Great. First one we're going to look at is Achuk Lama stated. Rinpoche. <laughs> And here's a picture of him. Look how youthful he looks. He was the head of Tibetan Buddhism. <laughs> That's the picture of youth right there. Yeah, is he already dead in this picture? For a while, he had some spectacular abilities. He specifically oh, yeah, headed sure. the Nyingma sect in China. He meditated for 43 years with Master What a Master waste. Just Arik a complete Rinpoche. fucking waste He established of this Yarchengar Monastery in 1983. It was the holy city. That is most ego. Of the, the, the point of all this shit is not to, to become the best at meditation. No. It's to, you know, be able to master your, your sort of self in order to uh, be more present in other aspects of life. But yeah. he turned it into a, a fucking competition. Kays and Lamas were living in Tibet. And it has the largest collection of these Rinpoches in the entire world. And these are people practicing rainbow body. Yeah, good for them. So this is the Yarchengar Monastery. And here he is in there. In, he's the one wearing yellow. And here he is when he was getting Jesus ready to achieve Christ. rainbow body. So his Look how young nasty. he looks. He looks like an old man, but wow. he was actually in this room, <laughs> believe it or not, where he actually achieved rainbow body. His body died, and it shrank down and created a little figurine. And before he died, he was what? able to achieve miracles witnessed are, by lots and lots of people. Is he going to show us evidence of that? Yeah, where's the figurine? He was able to leave his handprints and footprints in rocks. Wow. He could manifest statues out of thin air. He could download teachings. Okay, David, these are just like street magic tricks. He made a coin appear behind my ear. <laughs> Very important thing, where you're able to telepathically bring in information called termas, and you get new teachings from the universe, which he was doing. He could live underwater for days and not be harmed. He, he didn't oh, know. I doubt okay. that. Okay, I doubt that on one. Hold a second, David. These are getting increasingly uh, yeah. unbelievable because... Again, we have we have cameras all over the place. Now, everyone's got a video camera in their pocket. I feel like all you'd have to do, record them underwater for 40 minutes. That'd be insanely impressive. It would, actually. It, it, so if he could live under there for multiple days, I feel like there would be some form of evidence of him doing that. You would think he so. See into the future without any it's impediment. It's so cool that all these llamas are just huge fucking liars. I know, right? He had prophetic vision. <laughs> And he was able to create visual manifestations <laughs> of deities and like mandalas over his body. like a child on a playground. So apparently this is a photo of Lama Achuk, where he projected the image of... Oh, yeah. That's, uh... Yeah, he looks real. I can... That says a lot. That's all the evidence we could possibly... That's just a picture of a flower. That's not a guy. A lotus. As he was meditating, all this stuff he projected onto the film. That was he, supposedly done by him. It's he very did cool. not do that. When he died, he created this little figurine. And then they dressed it up in little clothes. And that's what you're seeing right here. You see these two fans... Rolling on it, so it doesn't. I, I, it doesn't look like a little figurine at all. No, it looks. What is he talking? He's not talking about the gold statue, right? No, he's, he's talking, talking about, about that thing behind it. That looks like a full sized person to me. Looks pretty big. <laughs> That's not a six inch statue. I guess spoil and decay even more. They wanted to keep it cooled off, but you know, it's pretty small. Look at the size of those fans. It's not a big body anymore. But that's his rainbow body, okay? That's Here's another it. example. Well, he looks Dirtan dead. Chukir Linkpa. And this is what he left behind. They made a little statue out of the guy. They dressed him up in little funny clothes. Right, but there's not a person in there. That's just clothes on something. There's no, yeah. there's no elements of a human in little there. Little hat. You can see his face is black. That's because he turns to ash. Oh, Here's another right. example. Oh, Chokie that's Chichen. why. Yeah. Here he was when he was alive. He was able to achieve <laughs> rainbow body. Psychopaths are like, well, I hate this guy. I'm jealous. I hate him. You know, yeah, okay, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah. That's he was why. just being nice. I mean, that's the whole point. Is yeah, nice he was person, just being nice. Learn compassion, forgiveness, and then right. you turn into rainbow body. So here he was when he was alive. Now, this is the other thing, David. I don't know how he can't realize. We're not upset at any of these people. It's just no. It's just silly. It's just the information is blatantly fraudulent. Yeah, it'd be nice, you know, if you had any sort of fucking evidence outside of whatever. whatever that the is fuck. That is that. It's a window with curtains. That's not a person. And this is a little rainbow body figurine that he left behind, all dressed up nice. 
in a little weird locked box. They didn't want anybody to steal it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But again, they're not I very locked. That. Here's yeah. another example. Ji Rao Kenpo. Let's look at some more spawn. Behind. There's up. nothing there. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay, I think uh, what David has fallen for is there's probably some sort of metaphorical significance where they're saying these people just evaporated and left their clothes behind. They ascended. And I think that's probably more metaphor than it is reality. And David has taken it that these... Uh, Very literally? Yes, these piles of clothes really were the people. Wow. Again? This is very important to them. They got 160,000 oh, cases important. of this kind of stuff and happening. Stupid fucking and they Burger built it inside King this crown. shrine, as you can see here. Here's uh, another example. Karma Rinpoche. He also achieved rainbow body. One of the most recent ones. He passed away on November 11th, 2013. He was originally 5 foot 9. Mm -hmm. By 14 days after he passed away, his body shrank down well, to yeah, 8 dehydrated. inches tall. <laughs> his entire body shrank nearly no. 80%, including the skeleton. And he achieved what they call small rainbow body. So here's Karma Rinpoche. Jesus. Wow, yeah, right. look he doesn't look very special. Just a typical old man. You know, very... Old looking. Uh -huh. Very and, uh, now Asian. Here he is looking like a little burrito. In <laughs> what? Okay, but there's not, again, there is no human being in this picture. There's nothing that even resembles a human being. Unless he's saying maybe they condense into like a, a ball of charcoal. Maybe. Size rainbow body. But Pretty that's just like clearly this is not really happening. Someone is no. just substituting the body with this. Yeah, okay, it's, it's this symbolic. This apparently were two footsteps that he left behind. Oh, yeah. So we're going to cover all this in future episodes. Oh, thank God. Why don't we pause there uh maybe in friday's episode we'll get to the point <laughs> we'll figure out what this is about uh, yeah I, I, at some point he will talk about trump i thought he might do it in the first hour and a half no but silly me he gave us the okie doke that we had to talk about the haters and old asian men <laughs> patreon.com slash hidden plate site pod uh Maybe more drugs ink this week? I haven't decided yet. Uh, at Hidden Plains, I rate it on Instagram. You are at Brandon Steele Hidden on Instagram. We are at The Hidden Pod on Twitter. Until Friday. Voodoo. Mom out.